What's up, potheads and political junkies? You're watching Cannabis Culture News Live. I'm Jeremiah Vandermeer, editor of Cannabis Culture Magazine and Pod TV. Good to have you guys here today. I'm in the Vapor Lounge at the BCMP 307 West Hastings in downtown Vancouver. If you're in the neighborhood, come down and check the show out in person. It's fun down here. It gets quite cloudy. Hi, guys in the chat and girls. If you guys have any problems out there listening to us in any way, please let us know. I'm looking at the mixer here. Looks like uh, all things are functioning A-OK, -okay, but if there is a problem, please do tell us in the chat. And uh, it's going to be a good show today. Spirit Plant Medicine is the name of the show today. And we're going to be talking about the Spirit, Spirit Plant Medicine Conference that's happening at UBC. I'll have a, a duo of the guests who will be speaking there this weekend on the show today. Stephen Gray and Chris Bennett, two researchers and authors of Sacred Plants. And we'll also have Owen Smith, Cannabis Baker, on the show. Owen, of course, is involved in a pivotal court case here in Canada about extracts and edibles. So we'll be discussing that with him. He's also uh, heavily involved in the media and Cannabis Digest newspaper here in British Columbia. Corey Peterson's in the house, too. She'll be on the show. I see her stuff over here. Uh, it's all set up. And I think that Jason Wilcox might stop by the show. I know he's in the house. Um, I think he may be making an appearance on the show, too. We haven't really discussed it, but I just assume that he will be. So that should be good. Uh, we're also going to play... We're having Chris Bennett on the show to talk about some of his latest projects. We're going to play one of his latest videos, um, a, a recent one that we haven't had a chance to actually talk about on the show yet or anything. So that should be fun. So we'll play that towards the end of the show. Now, of course, there'll probably be some other guests. I think John B., John Burfello, is probably going to stop by to get us nice and high on hash. So I'm sure that will be happening. I have my, uh, my girl, Duchess, here. I don't know if she's on cam. There she is. And I got to get some weed for her, of course, soon here. But before we do that, um, I wanted to bring up Stephen Gray because I didn't want to take too much of his time. I know that he's got a gig later tonight. And uh, so we'll bring him right up on the show right now and have a conversation. So Stephen, you can come on up. Yeah, it's probably best to come around this way. I know there's a wrap of cords everywhere. Any way you can get up here, <laughs> make your way, yeah. <laughs> It's an obstacle course. All right. But when you get here, it's so much better because, you know, it's a relief. Cool. <laughs> so, Stephen, good to have you yeah. on the show yeah, again. You're welcome. Now, uh, yeah. I have had you on the show before, if I remember correctly, at least once. Yep. When you were here in town speaking at the Spirit Plant Medicine Conference, um, either the last year or we couldn't figure out if it was a couple years ago. Um, yeah, so now hopefully this mic has enough volume there for you. Yeah, well... Is it registering? Looks good. I think so. Yeah, and yeah. you can always take it in your hand if the, that might be easier well, for you. Tell me if it's uh, not enough volume. But yeah, uh, well, yeah. we got you over the speakers here. I have my soundboard here. That might be good. Give, give me a try there. How's that? Got enough there? Actually, here, we, we might want you to hold it. Hold it. It's probably best to hold it. That might so be better. Yeah, that's yeah, one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. They heavy work duty. Best when you're closer to them. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Because yeah. okay. then we can hear you over the speakers okay. too, in house. So, Stephen, good to have you back on the show. Thanks. Now, um, th of course, this is an area of your expertise. Um, I can't remember the specifics of what we had you on the show talking about last time, but I mean, this is um, this is something that you've been doing for a few years at UBC here at the Spirit Plant Medicine Conference, right? Yeah, it's the fourth year of the conference, and uh, I was. So more more involved as a consultant the first year, and the last three years I've been uh, uh, the co-organizer. Um, don't want to sound pretentious, but maybe something like creative director. I deal more with the presenters and the less technical side of things, and leave the technical stuff to other people. You know, right. The tickets and all that, and the website and all that sort of thing. Right. Um, I'm there's more like the that. overall vision of the thing. Other and, kinds uh, of nerds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? I said there's other kinds of nerds for that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. I'm my own kind of nerd. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Me too. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, so that's very cool. So now you—that means you have some knowledge and understanding of some of the other speakers and people who will be there at this conference this time around. Then I got them all. Yeah. There's 20 people this year, counting the musician that we have, to uh, kind of help keep us uh, uh, from being in our—is uh, it uh, left brain all the time? Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. I, I don't want to take the time to go through all of them, but um, uh, first of all, I want to say that uh, um, it it. it it felt like an intuition that we've reached a new stage with this kind of work with what I like to call the antheogens, a common word. If there's one word for it, that's my favorite one these right. days. Um, uh, and, and that is that uh, they've been around the modern cultures for long enough now that 
uh, I think it's time for the people that are interested in working with them in whatever way to roll up our sleeves and get down more serious about how do we help these plants do what they can do in these cultures in the most sane and sustainable way. So there's a feat there, we're focusing on sustainability this year. We've got a great person coming in named Joshua Wickerham, um, who's founded something called the Ethnobotanical Stewardship Council. And their, their uh, mandate is to monitor the, all the conditions related to uh, particular entheogenic plants, specifically or particularly I iboga, ayahuasca, and peyote, <laughs> all of which are, in, to one degree or another, endangered. Unlike cannabis, of course, which will never be endangered. <laughs> now, now, when you say endangered, what do you mean exactly? How well, are they endangered? Uh, um, they're endangered in several ways. Iboga is the worst off right now because um, it, it grows in equatorial Western Africa, uh, in Gabon and Cameroon in particular, um, and uh, it's being uh, used up so fast that according to some very reliable sources, if the practices aren't changed dramatically in the next couple of years, it'll be gone within oh a couple goodness. of years. Gone, just wow. totally. Um, so that's a big issue. Uh, peyote, big problem. Um, uh, for the, the 300,000 or more uh, members of the Native American church who use peyote in the United States and to some degree in, in Canada, um, they're mostly relying on the, the, the uh, growing fields in Texas and they're in serious danger. Um, wow. uh, and ayahuasca, a little more complex situation. People are having to go deeper into the jungle to find it these days. They're having to harvest younger plants. Um, so all these plants need protection on that level, mm -hmm. but also the cultural environment around them and the traditions also need protecting. So that's important as well. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's one of the themes in the conference. Another one is the importance of what is uh, commonly known as set and setting, how to be prepared for uh, an encounter with one of these powerful agents and um, the actual ritual container involved. So there's, there's a lot of ways to make, to maximize the benefit of making contact with the plants and other ways that are not so great. Um, mm -hmm. So there'll be a focus on that. There's a strong women's contingent this year. Um, we have a couple of people uh, speaking specifically about the kind of sacred feminine approach to these sorts of things. Um, and I could go on. Dennis McKenna's going to be there. He's a legend in this kind of work. Definitely. Brother of the well-known Terence McKenna as well. Right. Um, What's the topic of discussion for him? Beg your pardon? What's the, his topic of discussion? Uh, his, he's, he's all over the conference, actually. <laughs> his uh, main presentation is going to be called Ayahuasca Yesterday, Today, and Tomorrow. Um, but he's also going to be on a pan two panel discussions. One is uh, to do with the ayahuasca sustain sustainability issue. And another one is a film which we're showing on the Saturday evening at the conference um, called Neurons to Nirvana, a local filmmaker named Oliver Hockenhall. Are you familiar with it? I'm familiar with the film. Yeah, did you see it? I haven't seen the whole thing, yeah. but I've seen the yeah. clips of it oh, and yeah. stuff. It looks really good. It's interview. It's mostly interviews. It's 108 minutes long, a convenient Buddhist number. Oh, um, yes. The mala beads have 108 beads on them. Uh, anyway... Uh, 108 minutes long, and it mostly consists of interviews with uh, really world-renowned figures uh, on the psychedelics or entheogens in general. Yeah, so yeah, there's like going to be a panel discussion following that, film. and Dennis is going to be on that one as well. Uh, Wade Davis, a uh, very famous person, um, not so connected to this kind of work anymore, but, um, but he has a, a history of working with the entheogens. And uh, I, um, I like the fancy he, design going on. Actually, he's probably going to be. It was fitting. He's probably going to be there for uh, one of these panel discussions as well. And then Dennis is also going to do a little inspirational, extemporaneous closing address at the end of the conference. So yeah, he's very present there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's an interesting guy. That's for sure. Yeah, he's got a lot to say. Yeah, he's really on top of all this. He just came back from the Iowa. The I know I forget what the actual name of it was, but it was the World Ayahuasca Conference in Ibiza, Spain. Um, wow. And he was really. Um, uh, we interviewed him on uh, Andrew Resmer's uh, Conscious Living Radio dot org show. Do you familiar with that show? That no, that show. Sure, it's a good. It's a good show to know about, actually. Um, Andrew. Where do Where do people find it online? It's on Co-op Radio. Okay. One hundred and five point. 
100.5 FM. Okay. And then it's um, archived on his podcast, which is ConsciousLivingRadio.org. ConsciousLivingRadio.org. Conscious. Oh, Conscious, I was going to yeah, say. Yeah, not Conscious. No, like unconscious. Way. Inconscious. Very, uh, <laughs> yeah. An interesting way to go about it, no, I guess. No, no, but no. Yeah. Okay. And, conscious and Living radio radio org. Dot org. Yeah. Okay. And it's always um, interviews to do with the general mind, body, spirit genre. But the for the conference, station. we've done three really great ones, and I really mean that lately. One with Dennis, one with Andrew Feldmar, who's brilliant also and will be at the conference, and another one with this same Joshua Wickerham that I mentioned from the Ethel right. Botanical Stewardship Council. Um, yeah. Very interesting. Now, I mean, you guys are looking at a lot of the science that goes on with these types of plant medicines, and, I mean, yeah. obviously every year there's new things that must come up. Um, you know... It must happen very quickly, too, because science into any of these things, you know, there's new studies going on all the time. And are there a lot of studies actually able to go on because of the illegalities of some of these substances? And does the science move forward as fast as some of the other things, or is it moving forward? Some of what other things? Well, some of the other things that are more legal, like, you know, there's lots of studies that go on into all kinds of different medicines that are legal studies. And these things kind of, you know, there's oh, different see, yeah. technologies yeah. moving through medicine very quickly. But, of course, with sacred plants, some of the, which are illegal, yeah. those things can't move forward so quickly, I guess, no, right? absolutely not. And even if they were completely legal, um, uh, the kind of studies that pharmaceutical companies do um, are, are never going to be done on the psychedelics. For example, Iboga, or actually the uh, primary psychoactive alkaloid extract from the plant called Ibogaine, Ibogaine sometimes yeah. pronounced Ibogaine, right. um, uh, has a very strong reputation for um, being able to um, get people out of drug addiction. That's right. It has a remarkable property for one thing, that it literally, physically, biochemically knocks out the craving for a period of up to six to eight weeks. Um, and, and what they say about that is it gives people an opportunity to reclaim their lives during that period of time. Mm -hmm. Well, they tried to get studies going on Ibogaine start since the 60s. And uh, it, um, it never got through NIDA, the National Institute of Drug Abuse, because it costs a pharmaceutical company um, upwards of $60 million to do a drug study. And are they going to do a drug study on a drug that, after one application, can change your life and you never have to use that drug again? Hmm. Not a chance in hell, right? Because so there's no returns there, There's I no guess. return for them. So, so, that's so they're never going to do that. It all has to come from, things. you know, passionate people yeah. who are interested in that stuff. Um, there are lots of studies being done in terms of the other part of your question. You know, in the late 1960s, all the research got shut down. Wham, bam, thank you, man, overnight, pretty much. And there was a 20 to 25 year dark age where there were no approvals for studies were granted whatsoever. Um, uh, however, there's lots of people in universities that want to study these things, and right. the, the uh, climate has uh, lightened since then, and thankfully there are a lot of studies happening on s uh, psilocybin mushrooms. There have been some amazing studies about in university. Johns Hopkins University completed uh, a remarkable study about five years ago um, showing that um, uh, people had the, the most powerful mystical experience of their lives um, with psilocybin mushrooms. There are new studies underway with LSD. Um, a wonderful organization called MAPS, Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies. Yep. Uh, they're doing a lot of work with MDMA for post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, they've had seven or eight completed legally granted completed studies now which are showing remarkable uh, effects for that mm -hmm. yeah so there is definitely work happening yeah very cool and yeah, of course as you know I'm sure uh, just uh, an Ill unlimited amount of research in cannabis these days. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, and it's hopefully more of that will be happening. It will. Um, you can yeah. count on it. <laughs> well, and I know that the laws themselves are actually here in Canada and other places. I mean, in the United States, I wonder if in Colorado and Washington, the new laws will allow for a lot more research at universities and things like oh, that as well. Unquestionably. Yeah. Unquestionably. It's happening like just like a flood of, of research happening now. Cannabis is actually. Uh, Chris probably knows about this, but uh, I've, I've encountered information that cannabis is probably the most studied plant medicine in existence over a very long period of time. People that say the studies aren't there, they don't know what the hell they're talking about. 
they, the studies are there and have been for a long time. Right. Yeah. yeah, usually the people saying they're not there are the people trying to keep things bought up. But the verdict is still out. We don't know. Yeah. The Ronald Reagans. Yeah. And <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it is odd to think that we have. I know I, that's one thing about the cannabis whole conundrum is that there does seem to be a lot of those studies there. And every time that they say, well, you know, we're just not sure. And, you know, mm. recently we, this might be a good transition into this whole thing. Have you seen this recent cannabis study that the media has been making hay over where, you know, they basically um, said that it causes schizophrenia. All the old standard things that they say they've uh -huh. dug up again now. Yeah. And the UK Daily Mail wrote this th this crazy article saying the dangers of cannabis and all this stuff. It's a finally been revealed how horrible mm -hmm. cannabis is. Mm -hmm. But really, they just, the media latches onto a few different parts of these studies and then blows them out of proportion. It seems like it's hard to actually get the information that are in the studies out to the people in a way that they can understand that's truthful. Well, it isn't, isn't it always thus, you know, with mainstream media? You know, you don't get the depth of stories. You don't get unbiased reporting. Um, you know, it just skims the surface and goes for the sensational. If it bleeds, it leads. If it scares, it leads, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that um, now you mentioned the profit motive being sort of behind some of these studies and things like that? Is that a conscious? I mean, when university, uh, when anybody at the university is going to sort of set these studies up, is that sort of a conscious consideration about how the media might perceive these things or who will be opposed to these studies and those other things? Like, what is it that motivates people's the people at university? It, is is there something that would bias them in the same way as a profit motive or something? Well, oh, geez, I don't really know. <laughs> I guess that's a big um, I, I do know that there are a lot of people that um, are they're, they're at the end, near the end of their careers now, but they came of age during the 60s, and they remember that up until, like with LSD, for example, there was an immense amount of research showing the efficacy of LSD in therapy. Immense, mm -hmm. and, and, right. and really, you know, unambiguous, really, you know? I mean, the, plant, the, uh, the substance was legal from when it was first... Uh, um, synthesized by Albert Hoffman in 1938 until 1967 or so. That's, um, what, 30 years of, of, of research and clinical right. practice. Um, and I so, remember reading studies yeah. to do with LSD where they would take prisoners and change the rehabilitation rates from 20% to like 80% within a very short period of time and things like that. Yeah, there's Just all kinds of research stuff. on that. Um, a massive body uh, and, and a lot of the people that are, that are still around now, and in fact, a lot of them are featured in Oliver's film that we mentioned earlier, uh, were around as young men um, and women, but mostly men, actually, uh, in those days. And so they're now still involved with some of these studies. So, th so when you talk about motivation, I would say most of the studies that are being done are being done, from what I can tell anyway, they're being done by people who are genuinely passionate about the potential for these plants. They're not being done by people who are looking for the scare stories, as far as I can tell. No. 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 No, and it's, it's weird because you see one or two of those studies come out a year and the media latches onto those ones. And then often the, the people who were involved in the study will come out a few weeks later and say, well, that's not really what we were saying. Uh -huh. You know, we, we yeah. were either misquoted or they've taken it completely out of context. But yeah. Well, I, I think we can put the put it to bed pretty quickly that, you know, don't take your information from the mainstream media. It's as simple as that, you know. No kidding. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, and now, how does the, is there a lot of media attention that you guys get at the conference? Is there, a, I mean, is it, it's probably all positive. Not enough, mention. actually. Not enough. No, no, the mainstream media is not that interested, really. No, no. Unless you can come up with something like a really hot contemporary issue of some kind, they're generally not that interested. They yeah. did do a feature uh, in the Sun... Ian Mulgrew did a feature in The Sun last year, but they printed it um, like the day after the conference, oh, so it didn't help. Didn't really no. help for promotional purposes <laughs> or anything. No yeah, kidding. No. Well, no, no. We have to we have to do the grunt work ourselves. Uh, you know, through uh, thank God for social media. You know, because that's the way the word gets out now. Yes. Um, you know, through Facebook and all these things and email and. You know, like the like. Yeah, it's yeah. a it's a new landscape of media, that's for sure. And yeah. actually, it kind of is empowering, I think, in a lot of ways because it does. Did allow you say disempowering? No, it's empowering. Oh, it is. Absolutely. Yeah, empowering. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, definitely. Um, no. It's empowering because it just allows us to become the media, rather it, than relying on you know these guys with their hands on the levers to mm -hmm. decide what everybody gets to think. So. No, the, you know, not to make too fine a point on it, but the, these these major media outlets like the newspapers, like the Vancouver Sun and the Globe and Mail, they're owned by like 
maybe two individuals all yeah. across the country. You know, can, you know not That's not crazy. a chance. You know, it's yeah. it's so limited uh, of a viewpoint on life. Um, but but as you say, thankfully, uh, uh, social media is changing things a lot, and it's really a huge part of if there is any hope for us in the next you know century or so i'd say the ability of people to communicate with each other that we now have is going to be a huge part of that you know? definitely well and I, you can see that it's already having an effect i mean just in, in allowing that information just to reach more people okay. and absolutely and people yeah. who are looking for it specifically yeah. you know uh, on that note i you know if anyone sees this uh in, um you know program before the conference which uh, is uh, the weekend after next, the 24th to 26th. That's right. I really hope that um, I'm really putting out a plea to anyone who has any connection to these uh, plant medicines to come and support this conference because it is a, a light in the darkness. And it's a, we also like to think of it as a community uh, energy building event. It's not just about going to hear a bunch of experts talk about these things. It's about interacting with the other members of a very loose-knit but potentially powerful community. You know, mm -hmm. so you know, please come and support this conference and the intention Be behind it. You know? <laughs> yes, yeah, no, exactly. Well, yeah. now can we talk about um, book projects? Now you have you're the author of a book called "Returning to Sacred World." Is yes, the that book was published I think four years ago. That's right. Um, and it was just my attempt at the time to uh, to put together all that I understood at that time about. Um, how I see how we've become as a species disconnected spiritually from who we really are, from our roots, from our interconnectedness with everything, and some suggestions for how we might overcome that. Um, things like meditation, prayer, and different kinds of practices like that. And the last third of the book uh, focuses on four of the major uh, entheogenic plants, peyote, ayahuasca, iboga, uh, LSD, um, Psilocybin mushrooms, that's five already, but anyway. Um, and, uh, uh, and yes, so that was that book. And uh, over the last several years, uh, this project kind of fell into my lap gradually, I guess, or kind of took on a life of its own. I had conversations with a few people. I had vaguely thought about trying to write something about cannabis and spirituality. And I got some really good encouragements from some really interesting people. And it's turned into a project which is underway now. I've basically done all the writing I can do for it. I have about seven or eight contributors. Um, some really interesting people from a number of traditions, including the Sadhu tradition in India, the Rastafarian, uh, the Santo Daime uh, Church, which also many of those people use, uh, uh, what they call it Santa Maria, but same thing. Um, and a number of other sources of uh, really interesting people. And the, the motivation, uh, intention, purpose behind the book was, especially now with cannabis uh, spreading so rapidly you know, throughout societies all over the world, many people are getting to know its medicinal benefits and its uh, create creative and recreational benefits. But I'm pretty sure from everything I've ever heard by talking to people and by reading that not that many people are aware that it has a um, really venerable ancient uh, history, uh, particularly in the Orient, uh, of, of spiritual use. This is where Chris Bennett uh, comes in, and Chris will, by the way, be speaking about that at our conference. Mm -hmm. He's uh, a world-renowned expert. I don't know if he would agree with that, but I would. Um, I think he on, would. On, uh, <laughs> on the history of cannabis in ritual and re <laughs> ritual and religion. He should, if he doesn't. Yes, and Chris is going to give people a little tour of that at the conference. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it, it has this amazing history uh, of use as a very powerful spiritual plan. I think most people think of it as a kind of a, you know, a gentle... Uh, you know, mind alterer. But if you if you sit down and focus, you know, and meditate and keep your mind present um, and don't let yourself wander off much or just get into constant thinking, uh, this plant has amazing potential to uh, be a spiritual ally. Mm -hmm. And so that's the purpose of the book, you know, to draw people's attention to that possibility and the variety of ways that that can be uh, unleashed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's an interesting thing for me because... You know, as the editor of Cannabis Culture, there's a lot of people who read our magazine and who watch our shows that have probably never had any kind of a spiritual experience at all. 
and who look at these plants as a way of having a good time and, you know, some, you know smoke some pot, have some yeah. fun, yeah, you know, exactly. and those kinds of things. And, and the same with mushrooms or other drugs. Yeah. You know, and, and for a long time, I was one of those people as well, and I yeah. wasn't quite sure what this whole spiritual experience was. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, when you think about marijuana, I bet there's a lot of people who are, you know, thinking, well, I've never felt that spiritual experience. Yeah. What is it that these plants can do for people? Like, what is it that... What is that spiritual experience? I guess that's a tough question, but... No, it's, it's, it's an answerable question. Um, uh, the word spiritual is tricky, you know, so it's almost better to set it aside in some ways uh, and use uh, words like um, uh, connecting to your unconditional authentic self is one way of putting it. Mm -hmm. um, connecting to reality is sort of a simple way of, of putting it, but it, it's meaningful in its sense, in itself to say that. Gnosticism um, or something, this idea of connecting well, it's, to some it's what we are once we knowledge or something. It's, it's who we are when we're not trying to be anything else and, we're, and when we're not obscured by the wounds and limitations and conditioning and stories we tell ourselves that we've carried through from our childhood or who knows, perhaps from past lives even. When everything else has fallen away, there's something real there. This is, this is ancient knowledge. You know, Buddhists have been talking about this for 2,500 years. Native Americans and indigenous people all over the planet have understood that there's something that you might call the unconditioned authentic self. And it's possible to, it's not something you kind of reach for, it's something you uncover. You know, as the Buddha said, everybody has Buddha nature, and it's just a matter of removing the layers of obscuration that prevent us from experiencing that, and it's sometimes referred to as awakened heart. Because when you surrender and open up and uh, relax into that state, your heart awakes as well in an unconditional way. It's not like, you know, you love this and you hate this. It's like you have an open, awake heart at that point, okay? So, so what these plants do, including cannabis actually, what they can do in the right set and setting, and you know, uh, we, like the, the conference, feel this is really important yeah. to, to have a proper ritual container for these things. But when you do, um, they can be considered uh, dissolvers of all these um, limiting, stuck, old patterns and allow you to just sit down, enter into what some people might call stillness. And out of that stillness, you know, somebody asked the Buddha, the story goes, somebody once asked the Buddha, how do you know you're enlightened? And all he did was put his hand on the ground, the earth, and said, this solid earth is my witness. In other words, there's no case to be made for it you know what's real. We all know what's real, but we get confused by ideas, and the plants can cut through that if you give them the opportunity, you know? It's not about dogma, not about another opinion or another worldview or anything. It's just sitting down and being real and being present and still and calm and open-hearted in the moment. Mm. It's about experiencing something yeah. directly. Or, yeah. yeah, and it's available to all of us because that's who we are uh, uh, underneath everything else. Yeah. Wow. Well, very great way of describing it, my friend. <laughs> you're, you're <laughs> and so now the, the new book, this one is due out sometime soon, or this oh, is Oh, it'll probably be about a year. I'm, I'm yeah. uh, still getting, waiting to get some of the contr contributions in. Um, it's going to be called Cannabis and Spirituality, and for people uh, tuning in, um, I'd like to say that uh, within about the next three weeks or so, I'm going to have a website up for it. It's going to be called CannabisAndSpirituality.com. Excellent. And uh, I'm hoping uh, that as well as a source of information, it'll also be an interactive uh, uh, center, so to speak. And so I hope to hear from people and have them s submit things themselves and so on. Um, uh, but the book itself, um, I'm establishing an online presence at the moment. And uh, I'm going to wait until I've got a bit of that happening. And then I'm going to send out some book proposals. And uh, that takes a while, uh, and so it'll probably be a year before the book actually, you know, comes out. I'm hoping it'll be put out by a reputable publisher, if worse comes to worse, or not necessarily worse, but an another avenue, of course, is uh, self-publishing, which people do as well these days. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's interesting because I mean, you see, when you go to Banyan Books, for instance, yeah. you see books about all of the other plants and spirituality, but it yeah. is kind of rare to find a. For me, like a cannabis magic book would be very interesting, you know. Uh -huh. and I know that Chris has been 
talking about that as well. Yeah. But, you know, because I, I'm interested in so, sort of that end of it, uh, the Crowley inside of it and these things. I, mm-hmm. I think there's been some of that in the sort of modern age that's interesting to me. But it doesn't seem to be in the new age community really paid that much attention to in a lot of ways. No, and again, that's the purpose of the book, you know, that hopefully people will you know, give some attention to what is arguably the most powerful potential of this and all these other plants. You know, you mentioned psilocybin mushrooms and people take them in a casual circumstance and for many people that's a really, really interesting experience. But if, you know, there's traditions that go back, you know, uh, into ancient times, you know, in the Far East and um, in Mexico, places like that, in the Oaxacan mountain range, um, where they, they know how to just get down to the deepest possible, you know, wisdom understandings that can come out of these plants. They've been using them for thousands of years, but they always do them in a ritual context. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it, it is, you know, I, it's interesting the rituals that go along with these things and how much that plays into this stuff. I, mean, I, I just at my house the other day, I did a little DMT out of a pipe, and I, it was just my, you know, a little sort of thing that I did, and it was, it was very interesting, but. I find that the few times I've done DMT, the times that I've sort of thought about it and put a little bit of that sort of ritual aspect into it and yeah. taken the time to go through it and make sure that I was doing it properly, the experience I had was a lot more powerful in certain ways. It seemed less scatterbrained and all over the place and I was, I think I was ready to accept something else from it. And I seemed to, uh, the last one I had was, and again, I was filled with, it was an experience, it's like going on a roller coaster. It's really something that you can't just have in everyday life it's this blast of, you know, this other otherworldly thing happening to you for this brief period of time that kind of puts you puts a different perspective into your brain that you just couldn't find regularly. So, yeah, no, it was great for me. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Well, a really simple way of putting it is, uh, you go deeper if you focus. It all right. comes down to your intention. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, I I agree with that completely. Um, there's this this whole idea of. I, you know, when it comes to magic and all these things, it's this idea, the rituals themselves are almost like the placebo, which we know is actually something that can really heal people. And, you know, if you think you're taking some sort of a pill, your body actually responds in a way and heals you up and does these kinds of things. So there seems to be some kind of a technology there with rituals. You know, and even when they give people pills that have a little logo on them, the pills work that much better, or, you know, even when they know that they're placebos. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But they're, they're, that ritual that they go through of doing this thing that is supposed to work and it does work seems to have an effect, so. Absolutely, it's an excellent point that you make there. Um, uh, in, you know, uh, there have been times, uh, I've been involved with the Native American church, they used the peyote in their ceremonies, and they had times when the repression was so heavy it was difficult for them to get the medicine, And um, but they always had one peyote button they called the chief, and it would go on the sand altar in the teepee, and sometimes when they didn't have the medicine, they just passed the peyote chief around to everybody, and they would just kiss it or something, and they still had a strong experience with it. Right. Almost exactly the same as if they had eaten a bunch of the medicine itself. Yeah, so it's true. And then that comes down to this, back to this idea that we, we all have an innate, um, unconditioned wisdom within us, and we just need to uncover it. And mm-hmm. yes, if it's a placebo effect, great, cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever name you give it, it's uh, something that's inside of us. It's a power that's there. And yeah. as you say, it just needs to, you've got to peel the layers back and reveal what's underneath. So Definitely, yeah. yeah. Well, thank yeah. you very much for coming yeah, on you're most today. Welcome. And so now this is in two weeks, not this weekend, but the weekend after. Yeah, it's only at um, UBC. a week from today. Actually. That's right. Yeah. So, all UBC. Right, okay. um, you can purchase tickets online at spiritplantmedicine.com. Yep. Spiritplantmedicine.com. Uh, if that doesn't work for you, I don't know why it wouldn't, but for some reason, uh, you can also phone the office at 604-435-5555. Fantastic. So I hope we'll see anyone connected to any of this kind of plant work who has any interest whatsoever in the future of these plants, including cannabis, to come to the conference and support the work and be part of it and learn from it themselves, of course. Excellent. Yeah. Well, I hope to catch some of it myself. Stephen yeah, good. Gray, thank you All very right, thanks much a lot. for coming on. Really appreciate it. Take care. Fantastic. We'll have you back again soon. And uh, yeah, it should be interesting to see uh, (laughs) the speakers there this time around. Yeah, so I guess you'll be back again next year. Do you you come back to Vancouver in between? I live in Vancouver. Oh, you're you're here all the time, so we can have you down here anytime then. All right, my friend. Thanks so much for coming on.
Yeah, so that's going to be a cool conference. Now, we have another speaker from that conference that's here sitting with us right now, Mr. Chris Bennett, friend of the show, who's been on the show many times. Chris, brother good man. to see you, brother. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Show's going well here, looking good. Now, uh, you just sauntered up from the Urban Shaman downstairs. Yes, I did. Your place of business, where you make sacred herbs available to the public at large. That's right. A very How's wonderful business? professional. Business is good. You know, it's a real honor to be able to provide some of these sacred plants that are still legal uh, um, to people in Vancouver, and uh, we've been doing it a long time. Yeah, you guys are uh, always busy when I go down there and doing very well. We have some other changes happening in the building. We're going to be providing some sacred plants, the seeds for some sacred plants right here in the building that are not legal, uh, but we'll Good see how see. that goes. Yeah, seeds in the building. Pot is back on the block. Block, back on the block. Now, the crazy thing is they have seed selling going on across the street, just down the street, the Vancouver Seed Bank, who are the people who are actually gonna be providing us with the seeds. They seem to get away with it. Everybody else gets away with it. So it's only if you provide the sacred medicines and then, you know, yell at government officials and try and expose the lies too loudly, then they'll... Don't sell them to the States. Don't, yeah, don't sell them to the States. Yeah, we won't be selling any seeds to the U.S. Well, probably, I'm, sure, right? I'm sure those seeds have given birth that went down there, have given birth to a billion-dollar industry there right now already, you know? It's, well, it's, it's, definitely. And, I mean, look at what's happened in places like Colorado and Washington because of all of that, and in California and other places where medical marijuana has been such a staple for everyone. Yeah, you got to give big thanks to Mark Emery and his... Canadian seeds pushing. So, Chris, now, I mean, you've been in the building for a long time, so you saw all that stuff back yeah. in the day as well. Um, things have changed a lot since even just Mark was raided in 2005 or, and that whole thing. I mean, there's been some drastic changes. Um, on the spirit medicine side of things, in the Urban Shaman, are there that many changes for things? I mean, the pot movement is going leaps and bounds. What about these other medicines? Are we, do we have, I mean, it's... Well, Once pot's well, legalized, you, you know, we have they're, to they're move on to them they're, or something. They're really taking a look at a lot of things like psilocybin mushrooms and LSD and ecstasy for psychotherapy, for PSTD and alcoholism and other anxiety, near-death anxiety. There's a lot of, uh, of research taking place on that right now for the first time in you know, a decade or two, uh, serious research. So they're, they're, you know, I think that, that, and that has been ground that's been broken by medical marijuana and you know so people are start kind of mm -hmm. opening up the idea of of these different plants and their their medical and psychological benefit you know um so yeah that, that that's definitely happening and things like kratom are showing a lot of like medical qualities for pain relief and for getting off harder things like the opiates and things mm -hmm. like that a lot of people are addicted to uh oxycontin for pain management you know and they yeah. are buying kratom leaf to get off of the oxycontin you well know? and i think as some of the business people get a little bit more savvy they realize like the people who are selling the kratom and stuff they realize that they have to sort of influence the politicians and stuff so i think we're seeing lobby groups Absolutely. behind some of these companies Absolutely, you know and uh, i'm sure the same things happen with medical marijuana and others he's stock market companies and whatnot, you know, and exactly. that's, that's having a huge effect. Yeah, yeah, so I wonder if, uh, have there, I know recently there was this whole, uh, you know, bath salts and spice and they've been doing all that kind of stuff. Um, and that, I think, was that you and I that was downstairs trying some of that spice? Uh, we no, acquired I, I some never, of that. I, I, I was given oh, some, I never used it. it myself. I was just, uh, just seemed always iffy to me, kind of sketched out, you know. There's always some things There's that are like There's plenty of marijuana that. here in Vancouver, we don't need Fake exactly. Marijuana. Now, the one that I was interested in was this uh, Blue Lagoon, which was also a little interesting. Yeah. But that was, those were all... That's um, a scaledium, a chocolate extract, a saffron extract, and uh, it produces a kind of ecstasy-like groove, uh -huh. but it's a little more chill. Say somewhere between marijuana and ecstasy. Haven't they banned that one now, too, though? No, uh, oh, well, you... there's something in it got that was in it got uh, banned in Australia where it was produced. Oh. And so it's no longer in production. Oh, so that's why we can't. Yeah. You don't have it anymore. Yeah, I still have some, oh. but what I have is the last of it. Oh, well, I might and have to it, scoop yeah. that up from yeah. you because it's so good. Yeah, it really no, is. Sure. It, it feels like ecstasy or something. Yeah, it's, it's got a really... It's yeah, just like uh, the, the, the main thing in it is a, a, a traditional cannabis admixture in South Africa, and it's a natural SSRI, and it really takes a lot of the angst and stuff out of cannabis when you use it if you have any problem with that. Um, and uh, really, you know, if you're feeling grumpy or down, it really does put you in a better mood, kind of a cheery or happy kind of state, you know? 
Yeah, well, it definitely had an effect on me. Uh, it wasn't for everybody. I, some people that took it reported that they didn't like it as much. But yeah, no, for sure. For it's me, they, they, I really liked yeah, it. Yeah, I think it really depends on your uh, interior serotonin levels and stuff like that, how it affects you. So, Chris, now you're going to be at the Spirit Plant Medicine Conference this weekend. What's your top? Are you It'll speaking be next about, weekend. Or Sorry, not this yeah. weekend, but the yeah. weekend after, one week from today. I'll, I'll be talking about uh, the role in, uh, of cannabis in a number of well-known re- existing religions. So I'll be talking oh. about it in uh, Taoism, Buddhism, Hinduism, Sikhism, uh, Zoroastrianism, Weed. Judaism, Christianity, Laptop and case. Islam are the, the ones that I've done. So I've decided to just stick with... Uh, religions that are still around and then show and document the role of cannabis in those in their formation period that's really not really very well known. Those are the crowd pleasers. Those are the crowd pleasers and you know kind of a basic overview. I'm also given a a, a lecture in White Rock for the Historical Society on the Friday. Oh yeah. Uh, um, A bunch of people that into archaeology and history and I'll be given a, uh, a lecture on the Friday. I think it's free in White Rock somewhere. I'm not sure where you find out about the White Rock History Society. Jeez, how do you That's uh, an interesting Yeah, so it'll be gig. more like archaeology and stuff for that. Oh, very cool. So, some great archaeological finds from cannabis in the last couple of decades, for sure. And, and now you've actually gone to, you've reported on some of these in some of your videos that you've made. You and Cloakied um, shot some footage. Or, yeah. yeah, yeah. we put on the Cannabis Roots Conference a couple years back with POT TV and brought out a number of well-known academics and scholars who have uh, been writing about the history of cannabis in different areas of history and culture, and I had the chance to get some really good interviews with that, and so I've been putting together different videos and uh, um, you know going through some of that material. Yeah, and you, I mean, the last few videos have been really good ones. I've got uh, a couple that I haven't actually watched all the way to the end now, but I wanted to ask you about. Um, the, the Mithra one was one that was interesting and yeah, recent. Yeah, Mithras is a fa- fascinating god. It was uh, originally a Persian uh, god, but he became popular in Rome uh, in the first few centuries uh, B.C. and A.D and uh, um, worshipped by emperors and soldiers and stuff. And, uh, in fact, uh, the December 25th was actually Mithra's birthday right. up until about 375 A.D. when the Christians adopted it because <laughs> uh, it was preempting their celebration of Jesus at some time in early January. Uh, um, and uh, uh, a lot of the of motifs, the Eucharist and things like that, are... Uh, seem to be derived from uh, um, Mithraic uh, rites, and uh, one of the church fathers uh, complained about uh, the devil having the foresight to uh, steal the Christian uh, Eucharistic <laughs> ceremony uh, uh, symbolism before Jesus had arrived. To go back in time. To go to, back in time to right. kind of, you know, that makes like predate sense. it. Somehow got whiff of God's plans. Well, that explains and, it yeah, all. Yeah, that explains it all, yeah. <laughs> yes, no But, yeah, no, that's, that's great. There's, like, I've got both Hillman and Ruck talking about that, and they're talking about uh, um, the Mithraic use of uh, cannabis incense and fumigants in these enclosed chambers, underground grotto-like chambers that the Mithraic rites were held This on. is how they consumed it. it was yeah, yeah, it was like... Hot boxing, essentially. Hot boxing, essentially, yeah. 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 Kind of how uh, the weed guy did in his The weed guy video. in the Scythians as yeah. well, yeah, before him. You know, hot boxing was, the, you know, there's no evidence of pipe uh, smoking of cannabis prior to the discovery of the New World uh, around the 15th century, in 14th, right. 15th century. And uh, um, uh, mostly if it was burnt, it was inhaled hot box style. Uh, um, or directly over top of a burning embers and stuff like they that. Or else big it chunks was of hash. Uh, drank in preparations or ingested otherwise. Right, right, in bong form. They mix yeah. it with milk and things like that. So that's very cool. Now, um, Chris, you, the videos you've been working on, we talked about the Mithra one. You, you worked on a recent one with Lawrence Cherniak. This was, uh, now Lawrence is an interesting character. He's the hash guy in a lot of ways. Both the great books of hashish, you know. That's right. He was the first guy to really go around and document uh, the preparation of hashish in the uh, different areas where it was being produced back in those days, Morocco yeah. and before uh, anybody Lebanon, had even really before thought Syria, to do before that. Before he was ever doing that, you know, yeah. so he really broke some ground there and uh, um, documented, you know, the, the, the preparation and the culture around it. 
Yeah, no, he's a fascinating character. And, I mean, his books are legendary. Yeah. Some awesome stuff there. But, yeah, in your video, is that what... I haven't actually had the chance to watch that one yet, so I was wondering, that is that what you guys talk about? Yeah, mostly it's to... focused... Well, you know, uh, we also talk about Lawrence's uh, long time as an activist. He's been a cannabis activist in Canada going back to the 60s, you know, and uh, we had some uh, archival footage of him in, like, 1965 or something like that with Canada's first headshot. Whoa, uh, um, in 65. Uh, yeah, uh, getting wow. interviewed at that, you know. So that's, like, that's pretty old stuff, you know. Yeah. Uh, um, and uh, so we had some of that. Then we talk about his uh, travels and That's before lands. you were an activist, yeah, Well, long before I was an activist, yeah. I was you were like back pretty far, years, though. So, uh, I guess about 1990 is when I started. Oh, really? Okay, podcast. so that was that second yeah. sort yeah. of tier. But, yeah, I mean, you, when you were doing things, it was still, there was that whole lag that had happened from the 60s through the 80s. Yeah, well, it kind of died off for a while. I remember going to a smoke-in at the art gallery when I was about 12. Yeah, you know, here in Vancouver, and that would have been like '74 or something. So there was some stuff happening then, but uh, when they passed the laws prohibiting bongs and pipes and high times and grow books and things like that, it really just disappeared, and there was virtually no activism oh, thank you. Uh, of any real merit going on through the '80s and stuff. Um, so uh, um, yeah, so you know, it was uh, w when I. When I first became a pot activist in like 1990, people didn't even know what the word hemp was. You right. know what I mean? It had been so forgotten and, and, and whatnot, you know? Well, and you were a, hemp, a big time hemp activist back in the day as well. Well, that's what got me into it. I was living out in Euclid and there was a big controversy going on around the logging of the last old growth rainforest out there, uh, coastal rainforest, the Clackwat Sound. And, uh, um, you know, I saw, you know, once I started finding out about hemp for paper and, you know, 50% of the trees cut here in Canada go to the pulp mill to be, produce paper and one right. acre of hemp over the same 20 year period can produce as much paper as four acres of trees. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's like an obvious, uh, obvious Renewable alternative, resource. you know. And so uh, um, I was kind of coming from the approach of jobs and the environment, you know, you got to kind of have something that works for both. Right, and now this is sort of led to your awakening about cannabis and it being the tree of life. Yeah, well, I had a spiritual experience um, after shortly after finding out about the industrial uses of cannabis um, uh, that uh, uh, um, ended up with me in a kind of stone state and reading the book of Revelation, you know, when Gulf War was just starting and some other things were happening that kind of uh, initiated it. And uh, I had this religious experience where I thought that Cannabis was a tree of life, and after that, I couldn't decide if I had just tripped out or if there was anything to it. And I thought, well, you know, if there was anything to that experience, then somebody, it would be beyond, beyond my personal experience, you know what I mean? Uh, um, and so whenever I came across something regarding the role of cannabis in history, I started uh, filing it and documenting it and then writing articles and stuff like that. And 25 years later, uh, um, I feel that I have really put together a really solid case that cannabis was in fact the tree of life and as well as the Haoma of the Persians and the Soma of, of the Vedas, you know, in India, yep. uh, um, as well as uh, the Cannabosum of the ancient Hebrews and uh, um, going back further, you know, and was used by early Christian Gnostic cults. And uh, um, that material is, you know, uh, increasingly accepted by uh, academics as they read it, you know. Definitely, as, as and that's what Stephen was saying. As it sounds, you are you a world-renowned yeah. researcher, and the stuff that you're doing yeah, is you know, groundbreaking. And, and if you have any doubts about this, you should check out my uh, film on YouTube, Cannabossum, The Hidden Story of Cannabis in the Old Testament, and hear it from people like Professor Carl Rock and Dr. Ethan Russo and Dr. David Hillman and uh, these different academics that I interviewed to uh, document this. Right, and uh, now I mean, this is something that you've been writing about for a while. You have three published books, yep. and I mean, one of them is directly on this idea of cannabis being in the Bible. Yeah, yeah. I have uh, the three books. Are one came out in 1995. That was Green Gold, The Tree of Life, Marijuana, and Magic and Religion. And when I was researching that, I first came across these uh, references that the Polish anthropologist and etymologist Sula Bennett said were references to cannabis. Uh, Canna and cannabis was the Hebrew term. And uh, after that. I got together with a buddy of mine who had a degree in uh, biblical studies and we put together sex, drugs, violence in the Bible um, because uh, the title, you know, because we found that this uh, history of Cana was 
really wrapped up with these fertility cults and stuff that were in Canon and other areas. And uh, there was this whole theme of the sex, drugs, and violence right. going on throughout. They're the, getting the, the high, body. having sex, sex, and, and then, then violently suppressed. Having, and yes, right, right exactly. <laughs> um, and so uh, then uh, after that, uh, um, as uh, the inter internet increased in its uh, ability as an actual research tool and things like Google Books, which were developed uh, um, enabling people to, you know, do an index search of tens of thousands of books in one, yeah, yeah. one jump. It really uh, increased the ability to research the subject. Of, you know, when I wrote my first book, I was researching all that from libraries and books, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Uh, um, and once Google Books came out and I was able to access books and find out the titles of books I needed for, for the areas of research I was looking at, things just, you know, fell right into place. The I think puzzle it, pieces can yeah, come the, together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, and I think the same thing, you know, virtually happened with hemp. You know what I mean? Once people started coming up with the idea that you could use uh, hemp for all these industrial applications, then you start looking back through the annals of history, you find all this record of it actually being used in that way. You know what I mean? Right. And, and that's really been the strength of, I think, my work and research is finding the words of others to make the case that I want to make rather than, you know, just pulling it out of my ass and saying, right. oh, I channeled this or something right. like that. As a know? good researcher should. And I mean, yeah, and it's an interesting thing because it's something that you did actually have as this spiritual experience that came to you kind of in a Gnostic way, yeah, right? Yeah, for sure. And so, but it was this deeper understanding. I think I had, I think, you know, I, I explain that experience to myself now as having kind of uh, um, uh, uh, tapping into the collective memory. Right. And that I had the thought, and it really resonated with the collective memory. And it was like, yeah, that's it. That's, that's what we're, we're talking right. about here. So an archetype, like a yeah. Carl Jung type yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And so that kind of uh, gave me an uh, aha or eureka moment, you know? Right, exactly. And that's what these spiritual plant medicines are good for a lot of times. And also, I mean, uh, when we're talking about the Bible, of course, one of the main characters there is Christos. Jesus himself, and uh, as a plant medicine, I mean, part of the whole concept of Jesus was that, was that he was going around christening people with this holy so anointing oil. Yeah, yeah. oil. Jesus baptizes none of the uh, uh, apostles or anybody in the, in the Bible itself, but he sends in the oldest of the synoptic gospels, uh, Mark, he sends out the apostles with oil to anoint the sick and cast out demons. And casting out demons you know, up until the medieval times could simply mean th things like treating epilepsy which was considered demonic possession right. until the medieval age. Medieval yeah, age, if you had right? a headache, that was just a demon. You know? Yeah, yeah, well, a lot of, like, you know, uh, um, you know, medicine and, the old, and religion were combined in one sort of thing, you know what I mean? You'd have your right. herbs that you took and a ritual that went with the herbs. Right. And uh, much of the earliest references to cannabis-based medicines uh, um, are interwound with uh, rituals that go with it, right, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, as we were saying before, I mean, this whole idea of the placebo effect in medicine really is just this. And what they're, they're finding that the placebo effect works better when they administer it in the right way. Yeah. Well, that's a ritual. I mean, really, what they're doing is giving you this ritual, making it easier for your brain to deprogram it, yeah. and then you can treat yourself. By your faith, you should be healed, you know. Right. But, you know, like, uh, you know, it's not like cannabis is just a placebo. When you're dealing, you know, that, but I, I would imagine that that placebo effect of belief really enhances uh, uh, the effect of cannabis medicine. Exactly. But you know, the whole endocannabinoid system, you know, that's like opened up a whole new area yeah. uh, of things. Well, and I always have this problem with medicine where it wants to separate these two things of medicines that work and placebo into two completely different categories. Absolutely. I mean, everything is has that air to it. Everything, your brain is a very, very powerful thing. And it, it literally, I mean, it has an effect on your health. You can you can really regulate a lot of your health with your brain. Oh, if you're depressed and things like yeah. that, it's going to have a, a, a effect on your overall health. Right. Uh, um, your attitude and all those types of things have, have a, you know, physical yeah. health. You know, and when it comes to cannabis too, you know, I'd say that my research has really led me to believe that we have a, a co-evolutionary relationship with this plant. And uh, you know it's thought to be our oldest cultivated plant, and our relationship go you know goes a lot further back than than agriculture. You know it's thought like based on finds of uh, tools used in the deportation of hemp, breaking fibers off the stock, placed it at about 26, 27,000 BC right now, and this is really early on. You know like we were like still uh, cavemen back right. then. You know, uh, um, and uh, um, you know then 
once we started growing it, it's growing in our settlements, in our waste material. And then we're ingesting that plant back. And so we've got this like biofeedback loop going of us putting ourselves in it and it putting itself in us. Right. And this may have led to the development of uh, the cannabinoid and endocannabinoid system and the, and the close relationship of the two. And, uh, you know, also hemp seed has gamma linoleic acid, which is only found in human mother's milk and a couple other rare seed oils. There's molecules in cannabis which may uh, attribute to its, uh, contribute to its uh, reputation as an aphrodisiac, which are very similar in structure to female estrogen molecules, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, well, we thing- share these kinds of relationships with other plants as well. It's not just cannabis, but there's not, I mean, it's odd that there's so many Well, the uh, endocannabinoids contact, and cannabinoids right? are very, very similar. You yeah. know, like the endocannabinoid system itself is fairly old, but the, the way that cannabis interacts with it is there's like yeah the, they're virtually some, they must we must have been the same thing at one time or something like that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you know for sure no it's an odd thing that we I mean this goes for all when you look around in nature at many different things I mean it's to believe that we're not part of those things is just absolutely well ludicrous. it's a mixed mash you are what you eat you know what I mean and it's yeah. like a pink flamingo is pink because of the type of shrimp that it eats you know it's right. like uh, um, right. those molecules you ingest stuff and that's building up your body and when you're starting up together from primitive of single cell molecules and doing that it's like everything's eating everything and contributing yeah. to the matter and that other thing you know it, 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 you right. gotta think there's something's got to take place there. well and when you when you th- consider these bugs that have these like long noses that fit these exact the flowers yeah. precisely there's a bug for each flower and they all work together in nature and they've just co-evolved over time you know we we become the sex organs of the cannabis plant by spreading the seeds and by yeah. growing it and doing these things so it relies on this so it makes like itself the, the birds more attractive and the bees, to us. man it's the birds and the bees yeah, yeah, exactly, and it de- definitely it's a very attractive one. Now, I have a bong rip here, Chris. I don't know if you're a bong guy, but do you want to nah, hit this thing? Well, I think I'll pass on pass the bong. On the, the bong. joints are more of a joint I'm person. I'm going to go ahead and hit that one. But now, so the, um, the latest video that you've published is with Michael Horowitz. Yeah, yeah, great and, guy. Yeah, it it's, goes into sort of the last century of history of cannabis and spiritual use and some other things. Yeah, it goes from about the Le Club de Hashishines, the Hashish Club in, in Paris, France, that had writers like Victor Hugo and Alexander Dumas and Theophile Gautier and Balzac and De Nerval, whose, whose books are still read today, it's still published, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, a century and a half later, uh, up until, and there, let's say around 1850, uh, up to Leary and Leary's time period. And Leary uh, thought uh, cannabis awakened the fifth circuit, which is the pleasure circuit of the brain. And uh, he thought that was the uh, source of, uh, 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 of enlightenment. Where enlightenment needs to come from is that pleasurable place rather than some sort of dour kind of, uh, uh, um, you know, I don't know, repressed type of place, I guess. Right. Yeah, I really like Leary's circuit model. I, introduced to me by Robert Anton Wilson in some of his mm-hmm. books. But yeah, I, th- I really thought that was very cool. Yeah, Michael Horowitz knew Leary personally. He's uh, the godfather of uh, Michael's uh, daughter, uh, um, Winona Ryder. Oh, right. Oh, yes, of course. Now, in, in that, uh, you do talk a little bit about Crowley as well. or uh, yeah. You guys talk That's about good. the... The history of well, magic Crowley was and- a was a real lover of uh, hashish. You know, I, I I've got an article out there if you Google uh, the Great and Wild Beast six 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 and the Devil's Weed. I go over a lot of the references uh, to uh, from Crowley about hashish and his esoteric writings, as well as his ninety page essay, The Psychology of Hashish. And uh, um, Crowley was the first to translate uh, some of the, uh, cha- uh, the, 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 the things written about hashish by members of the Hashish Club. Right. And he put that, I think, in the first edition of the Equinox, his, his journal. Yeah, of, right. Uh, and now I, I just illusion. got a copy of that first edition of the Equinox. And, you know, I didn't realize what a prominent thing that the whole marijuana end of it played Absolutely. in Crowley's you know, people don't realize the no. influence of, uh, of cannabis and the whole occult thing. People like Helena Blavatsky, right. uh, the founder of the Still Running Theosophical Society, was a, a devotee of hashish and Gurdjieff. Uh, right. Uh, another popular guy whose writings are still around, hashish, uh, Alistair yep. Crowley. Uh, yeah, Crowley um, said it uh, loosens uh, the girders of the soul. Yeah, that's right. That's like comes from a Zoroastrian term, so he's obviously aware of the Zoroastrian use. Uh, and Crowley also, you know, obviously had some knowledge of this agent world use. 
uh, um, and made mention of it in more of an esoteric way in some of his uh, uh, essays and stuff that, 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 that right. appear elsewhere. Well, he's always kind of poking fun at things as he does it. And, yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah. you know, he's like in, involved with some of these secret societies and they put limits on uh, certain things that you could talk about. And right. cannabis, you had oaths that you weren't allowed to break. Cannabis was a, a, clearly a, a closely guarded secret of some of these uh, uh, cult societies of the 19th and early 20th century. Yeah, it's interesting, the Blavatsky thing, too. I didn't realize that she was heavily into the whole hashish thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. She said it uh, enabled her to look at her past lives and things like that, you know, called it a wonderful drug. Uh, I actually had the uh, modern Theosophical Society threaten to sue me over a poster I put out with uh, some of Blavatsky's material uh, um, years ago in the 90s. Uh, um, so yeah, this is a little off track, but I think it does come back around to a circle here. I was listening last night. There's a podcast that I love listening to called The Hermetic Hour. Yep. That Polk Runyon. I've been listening to it for years, um, but it, he does some odd sort of conspiratorial ones sometimes. And the one I listened to yesterday was about the Nazi Party's occult roots, right? And about how this whole idea of the Aryan tradition and all these things, and how they were kind of they liked Blavatsky's theories a lot too. Yeah, yeah. Well, the whole Aryan thing, you know, it's the idea uh, being that uh, the Indian Vedas and stuff were right. originated with the uh, Aryans, out, you know, from. I guess uh, in Tibet and all, yeah, yeah, right. all that type of stuff, and so there's well, they found those Caucasian mummies up and in China. And this is what I was going to say with the cannabis. With right? cannabis, you know I mean? now they found. I well, wonder you know, now was Hitler was Hitler puffing they, fatties they, or they, what? They, there's, it's clear <laughs> that this, you know that we, we, what we know about uh, the roots of cannabis through etymology, you know, and chasing it back through the Indo-European language and pro, into the Proto-Indo-European language. It was definitely, you know, the, the term Aryan has been supplanted by Indo-European studies because of all the bad associations with the term because of the Nazis. Right. Uh, um, but it's they clear were kind of that obsessed this, with this whole weird yeah, yeah, mythological... Weird white roots and, you know, yeah. getting uh, polluted by other races. Right. Uh, um, but it's ironic because that's still the, the, the you know, like the, the talk of Northern Front and uh, some of these white supremacist groups, you know, still hang on to this Aryan ancestry. But then it's ironic because it's like that's the history of cannabis as well. Yeah. And a few of these uh, uh, people, they, they all kind of think of like cannabis as a, a black drug or, you know, Hispanic drug or something like that. They don't realize that this wonderful plant is, uh, yeah. is the roots of that same white <laughs> their, culture. And their where, old school them, homeboys were yeah. buried with big bowls yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah. So what yeah. we need to get these, is these guys to start smoking weed because uh, one of the effects of marijuana is it will make you colorblind. And, uh, you, right. you know, that's was was the big thing in the 30s and the jazz age is all these blacks and whites were mixing because right. people smoke some grass and all of a sudden they can see some that human being across the table instead of some, you know, lower lower race person. And, uh, um, you know, it really opens people up to, uh, to, 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 to that type of humanity, you know. Well, and this is what I think when I think of cannabis as a medicine. Not only does, of course, it help physical ailments of all sorts, but I just feel like it's a medicine for your brain. And in the same way that we've been discussing these spiritual things, you know, on a smaller level, cannabis just seems to allow you to, like this, this loosening the girders of the soul idea, it allows you to kind of just take a small, a very small move out of your perspective and look at things in a different way. Absolutely. Ra and step outside of that programming that we have, you know, all around us since we're born. And it really does. I think that it's, it's hard to uh, find a person who smokes a lot of cannabis who doesn't think a little bit differently than the, your average robot. Absolutely. You know, you can have like some firm uh, programming and cultural views and then you smoke some cannabis and all of a sudden you, that, that, that's widened, you know? Yes. You start well, to question this whole, this the whole, things This whole you idea think. of like uh, the cannabis' effect on creativity by creating a wider range of associations. Uh, um, and expanding, you know, like say, you know, red makes you think of a fire trap for apple, but then you may take that a little further and think of, oh, blood inside of a human, you know what I mean? And, right. and expand on that. And that, that, that metaphorical realm of, uh, ideas. Yeah, metaphorical well. ideas and, yeah. and things like that. And this seems to be a, a real uh, source of creativity uh, involved with cannabis. That's right. And that's why those non smokers have CDS. Cannabis deficiency syndrome, or is it well, cannabinoid of, of like, deficiency uh, syndrome? Uh, uh, Crohn's disease and some uh, some of these other things are thought to be endocannabinoid deficiencies. You know? Yeah, no, it's absolutely true. Well, Chris, thank you very much for coming Always on. Always a pleasure. You have uh, you are working on more projects. You mentioned something downstairs or a video that's coming up or something. Uh, or? Yeah, well, I've got you know I've got you know more videos coming out. I'll be doing one on uh, cannabis in ancient Greece with uh, Professor Carl Rock and David Hillman, and then I've got an interview with Martin Lee. I've got to go through. But I'll be, you know, I'll be always producing 
videos and stuff um, uh, and uh, doing a chapter for Stephen's book on cannabis that was just on, you know, on, on uh, the role of cannabis and religion. That and, sounds exciting. Uh, uh, I'm always working on different things, you know. That's right. And now uh, we're going to have to try and bring back some of this. Uh, it, I was talking to Stephen just briefly about the New Age movement. And when I go to Banyan or when I talk to my friends who are into the occult and magic and things like that, Cannabis just doesn't seem like it's really well, on the you, forefront you know, of their at, minds. Look at modern so. witches, you know what I yeah. mean? It's like, you know, medieval witches were using henbane and belladonna and cannabis and other substances yeah, in and potent and topical preparations. And, you know, it's not this new agey, you know, hold your hands around and uh, yeah. kumbaya. Uh, they were psychonauts. Situ- they were psychonauts, you know what yeah. I mean? And uh, I don't know, I'm not really too much of a fan of that fluffy kind of, you know. I did ritual magic for a number of years and... Uh, I tell you what, you know, you throw some psychedelics into uh, the magic circle, and that brings the magic on in a much, much oh, more powerful way the than, uh, than, than, than without. Yeah, no kidding. Excellent. Well, that, we got to inject some of that back into the whole thing. You're there doing you go. a good job. Well, I'm doing sure there's that, some Chris. chaos magic happening out there if you're looking for it. Oh, yes, definitely. All right, my friend. Well, thanks okay. for coming on, man. Always a pleasure. Yeah, you too. And uh, we'll definitely uh, touch base with you after your latest stuff. We're going to play your video at the end of the show today. So. Okay, cool. And I see Corey is chomping at the bit over here. What is she waving around? Tickets, 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 tickets waving tickets. the tickets. We gotta give these out. What do you got? Well, well we've got enough if anybody wants to bash. get in. Live music, there. raffle, contest, auctions. There's also a door prize, costume, contest. Thank you, Vanna Neil. Thank you, Magnuson. Van Magnuson. <laughs> That's right. Very nice. Look at those hands. Handsome hands, he has. So if, anybody else, uh, if anybody else in here wants to get in on this... Are we giving these up. away to the audience or something? We're giving Is that what we're these doing? two away right now. And how are we doing that exactly? What are you eating over there, Katie? Mm, that looks good. Look, I'm hungry. We went, we went around the whole room, upstairs yeah. and downstairs, oh, and got people's names. Oh, good. Right here. Oh, you're really doing your job here. Thanks. <laughs> if there's anybody else who wants to get in on it, anybody, anybody any else takers, in anybody else in what? the room, we're gonna pull it. This right. this young person here. Where's the pen? Anybody got the pen? You don't want to be left out of this or draw. The, the cashier, no. The What's your name, my friend? Josh. Josh. Yeah. I'm Jeremiah. Josh. Handshake here. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> All right. That's gonna be the. That might be the winner now that we shook hands yeah, there. We're pulling it right now. And so, oh, thank you, Van and Neil. I mean, Van and Magnuson. Good luck. Good luck. All right. I, drug war is over. Yes, I like that one. That's a la John Lennon Yoko. All right, Neil, do you want to pick? Vanna. Dun, drum roll. I realize we didn't play the intro for the show today, but... What do we got there, Corey? <laughs> Mackenzie, fuck yeah. Oh, it's Mac Daddy won it. <laughs> what, employees are allowed to enter? Yeah. Yeah, I went All around. Right. I went around to the employees. Why not? All right. Mackenzie wins. Mac Daddy. Mac Daddy. There's no phone number, so I can't contact this person. If they don't come claim, we have to pull another one. If he's a lounger, then he's around here. If, if uh, he doesn't come it. claim, yeah. Oh yeah, he's a good guy. Was someone fine? Oh well, didn't you run, give it to? Didn't this happen last time and you found Lauren? Yeah, but we Lauren know left Mac her Dad number. No, le- le- Lauren had her number. I told oh. people if they weren't well, you, present, you they might need to put check their phone and see number. If he's around the corner. Hey, Katie, is Mac oh. Daddy here? He's got to come on the show to yeah, get it. Yeah, he's got to come get it right now. Like, That's we'll, the reason. We'll we gotta give him take a, a bong minutes. rip on the show. Give, yeah, you haven't done a bong rip yet, have you? Oh, I did one, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, Mac Daddy, the Blue uh-huh. Jay, over here. You have to do a bong rip on the show, and that's how you win. That's the only way. And you're not allowed to cough either, or you're for, you forfeit the tickets. You know, I actually like the worst throat. I'm just joking. Just kidding. Just fucking with you. That almost sounded like a Tracy Curley laugh. I know Tracy Curley's laugh. 
Mac Daddy. Mac Daddy, as they say. BCMP Lounge employee. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One of the most handsome, in fact. Look at that. If not the most. If not the most. Approaching one year here, too. That's right. Mm -hmm. Approaching one year. Yeah. Oh. So is that your, like, bronze medal or something? <laughs> What's that? Right there. That's my, uh, that's my, yeah. So that you deserve <laughs> these tickets then. What's that? I yeah. guess. For your one year anniversary. Yeah. And so hit that bong there. You should I throw will. it up on the table so the audience can watch there at home. Okay, audience. They, wanna, they don't want to miss where's that. The, where's the camera at? The camera is that thing right in front of you there. What am I smoking here? Um, that's marijuana of some sort. <laughs> now, what is that? Um, I believe it's that either Astro Boy Watermelon Fino is what I was smelling and thinking it was or something. I don't know. It's been around for a while. What's that? You smell it and tell me if I'm wrong. I don't know. I thought that's what it was. Maybe it's just watermelon, but it smells like watermelon to me. Okay. It's hard to tell. It's hard not to like. I've never won anything before. Well, this smells slightly different, but this has a different. Uh, this smells different than what the what I consider the old watermelon. This smells good. It smells like watermelon, but it has a bit of a must that's not the same. Maybe because of the jar. But you smell this and tell me what you smell that. You do it, you do it. Oh, that was like a pinball. Smell that too, Neil. Here, smell that there. Oh, jeez. Okay, here, I'm right here now. Yeah, they're the expert. Get the expert on this. I'm, I'm the expert. Oh, that's watermelon. He just knows one. You, can you tell that it's watermelon? Oh, yeah, it's Straight up. That's what I thought. As soon as I smelled it, I was like, who's this? It's watermelon. What is that one? But it could have been that. It smells exactly like that Astro Boy. <coughs> Oh my. This is just fresh. Well, That's because I've been rating 27 one. strains over in uh, Saskatoon oh, wow. there. My, I've sharpened up the skills. Thank you very much. Yes, appreciate, <laughs> appreciate the tickets. I got to get back. You got them. Uh, did you get There they are. Yeah. And did you took your bong rip? I missed I the whole did thing. I took two. Pose for a picture before you go in. All right. Yeah. Well, before I go, yeah. Very nice. On the show, but I uh, oh, okay. got to get back before. Nice uh, work, Mac Daddy. Katie blows the place down. So. Nice work on putting your name in a hat. You it was really actually, that. It wasn't even a hat. It was a... Uh, a bag. Yeah, I was like a bag. Yeah, or like a. She probably sleeve. saw my name through it and just says, "I want oh, him yeah. to win." Oh, she because she's. I want to see him because she's trying. She's macking on Mac, the Mac Daddy. Can you take a picture over here? Oh, oh, hi. Flash the, flash the. Yeah, just hold him up. There you go. Flash. Yeah. Now we're flashing now yeah. on the air. Are we well, allowed to do that? This is actually my first modeling. Corey's job. doing it first. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Somebody once, a girl, <laughs> came up and flashed me while I was doing my show. Oh, I know that. Remember one. that? Yeah, she. Uh, and it, she started she's like an older woman, right? Dance. Older woman, right? It was crazy. Mid-aged woman. Yeah, but she was still a fairly attractive. You know, from what I hear, she has very nice breasts. She did have very nice breasts. And you know yes. what? She was just sitting by herself one time in the lounge, and these two wrestlers and Willie. Uh, we all know Willie, right? Yeah. And so they, she was just sitting there, and she says, "Scooch over! I'm sitting down, enjoying this conversation." And these three big wrestlers in like Willie did had like no clue what to say to this awesome. woman. Awesome. Oh, she's a bit crazy, I think. Oh, yeah, well she was like used doing some naughty things with her water bottle at first and I was just getting distracted when I was doing the show and I was like, is she really doing what I think she was doing over there? You, you see and something. And then she just started going crazy. So anyways, I don't know how we got distracted on that, but yeah, there you go. You see something <laughs> in this place. Yeah, that's the BCMP lounge for anybody who hasn't been here. Things brief, like that happen every hour here, here, here around. Yeah. <laughs> Usually it's just Mac Daddy. Yeah, it's just when Corey's on the show, that happens all the time. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> all right, well, That's usually when we you. turn the camera Back off. Back to work. All right. Mackenzie, round of applause. All right. So that so, was uh, first order of business. What do you got for us? Well, uh, obviously next uh, weekend is the Halloween bash. Halloween bash. That's right. That's what you were just handing out tickets for. That's what he just won for. those tickets for. So that's what we're here promoting. Um, where did she go? She was there the whole time, and now she's gone. Oh. Okay. There I don't you know go. if she's coming on the show or not, but oh, okay. uh, we do have Jason in the house. Uh, I brought a bunch of things. One hey, wait. Thing, don't, don't you have other items that you were working on or anything? Well, one You're thing is I'm something. a patient in need, and so I did bring. Med my medtainer collection, and oh. I'm taking donations of any kind. Anybody ah. wants to put something in one of those medtainers? Let me look at your med collection. Oh, it's a pretty hey, good collection. this one's not bad. I'm kind of, I have quite my, quite a collection of medtainers at my place, <laughs> but let me see what you got here. Oh, yeah. Take that one. Oh, you have a gold one, too. A two. I think I just gave mine away to somebody who was really attracted to the shininess of it. Oh, yes. The, the new gold ones, like this... 
Jen. I didn't really want to give it away, but I have so many I felt guilty. Right. Oh, you have an old uh, High Times Cannabis Cup one. Yep. Score. Hey, speaking of the High Times Cannabis Cup, <laughs> one of the guys who went with me to the High Times Cannabis Cup just nice. stepped in the room. Nice. Luis. What's up, man? You want to come on the show? Come have a bong rip or something. This is our Cannabis Cup that we went to together. Ah, uh, <laughs> memories. Memories. Um, Oh, well, oh, yeah, you oh, got what's a lot that of good, one? That's a cannabis what was culture that one? one. I had, I just got that one. That's nice. the newest edition. You got a bunch of high times ones. How'd you score at least? That must be with the help of Johnny B or something. No, I bought it. That was, I actually oh. bought that. Are you stealing these from John? Gordon? No, but I bought that when I uh, He's like, was volunteering at Weeds. When I was volunteering at Weeds, I had to have that. <laughs> I'm just He brought teasing. them in. Which one? John, have this you been one? over? Uh, have you been over here yet? Which one? Yeah, yeah where's you? the hash at? What's up? Where the hash? <laughs> I have a whole table of hash. You should bring some of that over here. What do you got? Well, in your see, I've been wanting jars? to talk to him about about med tainers and one of these paintings right here too. But uh, that's just show, will you show some of you that what you had the other day off that you were handing me to the audience here? Well, you know, and then thing, hand me some more of it. I did. You did remind me. I am uh, donating. Uh, <laughs> you're gonna run out of time. Well, I forgot I'm a, a sponsor, actually, for the Halloween Bash, and I'm donat donating this so somebody lucky is going to get to win this. Oh, good. That's very nice. Good logo. Thanks. You do such a great job of that. Mm -hmm. Now, who was it that you were bringing on the show? Uh, Jason, did you want to come up? J-Dog. Owen? Owen? Okay, I guess Owen's going to come up. Oh, Owen first. Okay, I wasn't sure if we were going to do that, but... Um, because that's going to be a bit of a, an interview. So um, I just wanted to make sure that you were done what you needed to do. I'm pretty stoned. I think I covered mostly anything. Okay. But again, anybody who wants to get tickets either to the Halloween Bash, make a donation to the coalition, or a donation to me personally. That's all I wanted to say. Okay. <laughs> cool and the gang. Yeah, just kind of promote Corey, it. Trip C I'll leave in this the house. up here so people can see the coalition. There you go. You can leave that laying there. The Medtainer collection. And I guess we'll have Owen Smith come up. That's right. Owen's coming up next. All Thanks, right. Corey. And so, yes, yeah, so now um, my next guest, you may know because we've covered this on the show a heck of a lot of times now, but uh, we haven't really gone too, too in depth with some of the specifics here. So we have the man himself here, Owen Smith, cannabis baker. Also, media personality and superstar. <laughs> now, you're, are you the editor of Cannabis Digest these days? I'm the graphic editor. The graphic editor. There's I knew you were my... editing something over there. Yeah. And so, uh, very cool to have you on the show. Now, this is actually, is this the first time that you've been on my show? I the first it, time. I think Although it I've is. watched it quite a few times right, from my computer right. at home. I couldn't remember if I had you on during, over a Skype connection or something like that, but would you like a bong rip, Owen? Well, as soon as I'm on the show, I say we have Duchess Amsterdam. with us. Exactly, it's like it went in, went in Amsterdam. And what do you do when you're in Amsterdam? <laughs> Just don't answer that. You don't have to answer that. You don't have to go all the way <laughs> to Amsterdam. I won't tell him what I did. So. Just joking. I have yeah. nothing to hide. In Amsterdam, everything's legal, so you can pretty much do whatever you want. Um, so Owen, I mean, obviously, uh, we're gonna get into the whole edibles case but now are you do you eat a lot of edibles yourself i love edibles you love edibles yeah it, is that as, where all this came from in the first place as as um the, as a baker for the club it was my job to to test the products right and uh i could you know sticky fingers and, and, and that <laughs> and for become familiar with the effects so then you can talk to people about it and uh I certainly, I focused first on edibles and got, it, got to know um, the, the, the products at the Victoria Cannabis Buyers Club. Um, and then I got to into the distribution and got to know the dried cannabis a bit more. But it, it all, it came from my personal experience with my family, um, being that my sister got uh, got cancer when she was 20, uh, it's kind of skin cancer. And she used cannabis to help with the chemotherapy and uh, appetite and some of the common things that we know cannabis to be helpful for. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, was, that, that was before I started working at the club and so that was one of the real strong motivations for wanting to take 
the edibles issue uh, as far as it would go so that people would have the access to these options, those people who really need it uh, right away, right when they could benefit from it, from it the most. Mm -hmm. uh, and in some of these cases, especially with the kind of skin cancer that my sister had, uh, it's very important that you get the fast uh, treatment within, within as soon as possible, really. So, right. Yeah. Well, here's a bomb rep for you. Hey. And yeah, I'll, yeah, it's true. I mean, that's the beauty of the edibles is that they often will provide a higher dosage in some of the things that you need. Um, then you can really get. I mean, you can smoke a heck of a lot of cannabis all day long, and you might not get the, some of the certain things you're going to need, but you might be able to get that in a higher dosage in, in edibles. And I mean, I think just that uh, the process itself, I think, is easier for some people than smoking. Like, you know, my grandma, for instance, who has pain and suffers uh, and uses marijuana occasionally as a, as a relief for that, she doesn't want to smoke joints. I mean, that's just not her thing. She's, not, she's never been a smoker in her whole life. She yeah. can eat a cookie or two, but, you know, she's, yeah, not, not into the whole smoking thing. So it provides a different alternative method for people who might not be comfortable. Yeah, I, grandmothers are a good example. But then there's children, too, where they have, yeah, it's, it's not, not the, the kinds of chronic and continuous conditions where having cannabis in your bloodstream continuously on a regular basis is really important until you start to have a seizure. Yeah. So that's definitely another one of the elements to edible cannabis mm -hmm. um, that benefits is the long lasting, getting through the night and people, I mean, you might enjoy the act of smoking um, and yeah. it might be a, a fun thing to do, uh, but uh, some people you know, don't want to make it a necessary thing to do. Right. Um, you know, so you can have a cookie and then you, if you want to do some other things and you still uh, don't want to be in pain, then the edible will carry you through and then... If it sneaks up on you, you can have a quick puff and the effects will be fast acting. You know. Now, uh, I didn't ask you if you had a favorite kind of edible. Is there one that you like more than the others? Uh, well, I think as you guys were talking about psychedelics earlier. And because uh, eating cannabis has additional psychoactive effects through the metabolism uh, of our, our body's metabolism. I agree. And I've experienced certain, certainly comparable things to psychedelics through eating cannabis. Yeah. Um, set and setting, uh, you know, with psychedelics, the setting and how you, and on your mindset as well, those things are just the two, the two things which influence the experience. Right. So for, for me, uh, w with uh, any of the edibles, having a comfortable place to lay down, maybe having speakers arranged nicely, in the room and yes. a chosen uh, playlist of some kind. Maybe I'll burn some incense that uh, just sets the, sets the mood, sets the, the, the space, right. and then we'll be able to enjoy the edibles. As, uh, right, because I mean, sometimes it can be disorienting even for people. You know, the first time that my, my ex-girlfriend, Karina, ever did I tried any edible, she ate a brownie, and she was literally running around nuts, r hiding under the bed, and thought she was gonna die. And, right. You like, know, and so it can be, for some people, it's a bit of a shock, if, especially if they're not, and she was actually a pot smoker quite regularly. Yeah. So it was something very different for her. So it's true, I think it, you know, it's a different kind of high. It's the most common story that I would get for new members at the Victoria Cannabis Bias Club. guy signed up new members for a number of years. And 90% of them would tell me, oh, I'm not sure about the edibles because of the brownies or the cake that I had at the party when I was younger and I greened out and I don't want to go back there. And yeah. like the reporter or what we had for, with the New York oh, uh, yeah. lady. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, it's so crazy she wrote about it. Yeah, it's as simple as, as they did in Colorado by putting up a, a simple sign that says, you know, go slow, start low. Yeah. Yeah, it's something well, just, just like anything. Like if you're going to drink a lot of booze, you don't want to hit it too hard the first time and you're mm. going to get pretty drunk. But it helps to have just that little bit of education, just that little bit, just so that that's all you really need so that you can you can take it in the way that exactly that is comfortable for you. Uh, I think some yeah. pot smokers, people who are smoking, don't really realize sometimes that because uh, they smoke so much pot all the time and there's kind of a culture of I wouldn't call it abuse, but overconsumption, 
in our movement sometimes. You know, yeah. I'm guilty of it myself. <laughs> we like to promote smoking a lot of pot, and it sometimes seems frivolous. But, but yeah, I think that when it comes to edibles, you've got to be very careful. At least I do, because when I go too nuts, I get really stoned. And I do, you know, for me, luckily, I just end up falling asleep. It doesn't have any real, like, negative uh, effects in any way for me or anything. Just pass right out. Yeah. When I was go when I was in court, when I first met Ted Smith, who's the who ran the Cannabis Buyers Club. Yes. I went to see his court battles when uh, they had raided him, and uh, when he originally got the decision that, that allowed them to keep the club there, mm -hmm. um, I was eating cookies in the courtroom at that time. <laughs> so it was kind of, you know, uh, it was foreshadowing towards only three or five years later. I'm representing these cookies. Uh, in, Ted in is sitting yourself, behind me. Yeah. <laughs> well, so yeah. now let's talk about this case. Now, we'll go through a bit of a timeline here for the people who aren't familiar with where we are now. And I guess the whole thing for me gets a little confused as well because it's, it's gone through a few sort of stages. But, mm -hmm. I mean, th this, this happened, first of all, with them coming in and actually raiding you and busting you. Yeah, yeah. And so, what? I mean, you were just there cooking one day, and the cops came busting through the door. And That's right. We give me all your cookies. Se we were there seven days a week, every day for a number of years, in an apartment building in downtown Victoria. And uh, we knew, like, our neighbors were members of the club, and, th and they knew us. And we, had a, a, we, we felt, like, fairly comfortable after uh, that, that long. But it, it turned out, um, afterwards, we found out from the building manager, who was also friends with, close friends with a member of the club. It's all very much a community in downtown Victoria that yeah. there was actually someone making uh, honey oil on the same floor, which was causing people's eyes to burn. And it's probably oh. people were maybe smoking a lot of tobacco or something, and someone was complaining of eyes burning to the police. And then huh. it's hard to think that the, it would be from the smell of the butter, because I was, I was just making products with vegetable oils. Right. So. Yeah, it doesn't really make sense. It's a strong smell. So as soon as they came in the building, they were aware of that smell. Right. And at the same time, as being a baker, I was a DJ. So I was practicing <laughs> my DJ sets while I was baking. Kind of keep uh -oh. me like on a high, high level, a high uh, energy level so I right. could make all these products. <laughs> and, Might be a little too loud for the neighbors. And the, and the paper, wi wall, uh, paper walls. And so I, the, I think that's what attracted them to the door. Complaints. It's always complaints. Complaints. It's yes. always complaints that get you in the end. Dispensaries, look out, everybody out there. <laughs> That's how it always is. Yeah. yeah, I think that, you know, it's funny, this, uh, well, it's not funny, but this whole recent Budzilla thing, I'm sure you've heard of that as well. A dispensary in town busted for selling edibles, the latest person to be busted in town. And the cops said, oh, well, they're, they're marketing it to kids. Well, they just had it in a cellophane package. It was a cookie in a cellophane package. Right. So is that, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll talk, we're, I want to go back to the case, but it's an interesting thing that they're really trying to paint the whole, well, cookies are only for children thing. Yeah. Everybody loves cookies, don't they? Yeah. Who doesn't like fucking cookies? That's one of the reasons why we had cookies was because, you know, you got AIDS or cancer and it may, it's a cheerful thing. Yeah. And so it brings in an element of uh, uh, kind of family or something yeah. familiar. Uh, yeah, what do they want us to eat it in few, like, we were saying Brussels sprouts or broccoli, is that, would that make them happy? Something that kids don't like, I, you know, infuse the, I don't know yeah. what you do. You All know? of the like, uh, products at the Victoria Cannabis Club have been labeled not for, please keep out of reach of children and pets. Right. And we well, used and to is... make dog biscuits, but that's another story. Right. So now, the, so the cops come through, they do their bust on you. Now you you got arrested and they, it, it it comes down that it's going to be this whole edible thing. Um, now the first time around in court, how did that? It, how did it turn out the first time around? Um, what do you mean in the trial? What's that? You mean in the trial? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The first trial in 2012 yeah. was a month uh, in court, and uh, we had patient witnesses uh, from the club there to uh, including Gail Quinn Ted's partner and uh, three other ladies who are really brave to get up on the stand and, and you know say they're breaking the law in order to help themselves help their condition and that they weren't ashamed of it and you put and on quite a production of the whole thing it was a, it was quite a production a job, yeah. yeah we had 
Dr. Pate from California, who uh, used to work for GW Pharmaceuticals. He's an internationally known scientist for uh, medical cannabis. He's done some foundational studies, and he's been quoted in, uh, in like 90% of the Health Canada uh, studies that they use in their uh, information for healthcare practitioners. He was really knowledgeable. But basically, what he had to do is very simple, uh, because the uh, the law, the way it's described, the way cannabis is described in the law is inaccurate scientifically. It doesn't make sense. And it specifically doesn't make sense when you're talking about medical patients. But it actually just doesn't make sense at all. Um, the separation of all the compounds and then by telling right. people that they just are allowed the dried bud and somehow the compounds and the resin all around the bud they're meant to just stay connected to that dried bud. Well, we all know how sticky it is in the first place. You get it on your hands. So it's yeah. very arbitrary. So we just had to bring that. Anything could be hash. Yeah. They, they, they were having, you know, and even their new uh, mandatory minimums have things for hash extraction more than other things. And, uh, and that's, right. that's ridiculous. Like your grinder, you know, any of the, the trichomes that fall off of a bud, that's hash extraction if you scrape it up on the table. That's right. Even when a, a licensed producer sends out a container in the mail, you know, it bumps around and then the person gets it and the bottom of the container, there's a, some hash. Yeah. So what? So that's, that's an extra time in jail for that. Yeah. So it's very arbitrary. So in order to get it through, though, to a judge, we had to bring a very serious scientist uh, and he, you know, went to detail about how cannabinoids are produced and where they exist in the plant. And they exist exclusively outside the surface of the plant, which is really a, a, a special thing. Although the, 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 the uh, compounds to make them come from the soil, the plant transforms them in the stock of, its tr of the trichome, which you've probably seen. Yeah, little mushroom. most people on this show probably transforms them in a rosette of cells at the top of the stalk of the trichrome. And he used very beautiful language, too, in the court. I like that, rosette of cells, which transform these into cannabinoids that are then stored in this bulbous reservoir. And he used the uh, golf ball on a tea analogy, which I think appeals to judges. It looks just like that. Yeah. Yes, the golf, golf balls ball just fall off the teas. Oh, yes, golf, right. yeah. Well, and then in the, in the capitate stalk, it interacts with the UV rays and that's what where you get your active ingredients right in the tip right yeah yeah and just that little tip though of each of those trichomes there's actually it doesn't exist anywhere else these chemicals really and so by extracting what you're really doing is removing the good stuff from the plant material which people like bubble men say is like you know taking the pizza out of the pizza box yes or like Kirk said in court that it's it's the message uh, you know, you don't want you don't want the messenger. The messenger can go, and you just want the message. Right, exactly. Like, that, like you don't want to eat the pizza box. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I, kinda, I seem to like eating the pizza box though, because I love my plant. It's, I, 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 it's I, a yeah. sacred thing I think about consuming the plant material itself in some way. It's very primal. It's going to get crushed flowers. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. And <laughs> it's very simple. What we do with the cannabis now is very simple. But in times past, extract products were much more common. That's true. And if we look at the, I think that we talk a little bit about the hash, hashish clubs and that. Right, and the hashish eaters. Hashish eaters would have like this jelly and they would get interesting. Yeah. Eat a big hunk more, of it. Much more psychedelic experiences they would describe. It would go on for days even. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something interesting that we maybe would be able to explore within a future that has less um, criminal element, less criminal pressure, like pressure from, from the prohibition on the producers so that we can really cultivate the cannabis plant into, into the extent of our imaginations. Like I like the Egyptian one where they have the hashish cones. They put it on their head for ceremonies and they do the dancing and they wear these crowns and then the, the hash will melt onto the head as over the night and then uh, and then that, wow. get it through the head i mean what i didn't really i've never heard of that one that's i fantastic. think that was in chris, one of chris bennett's books oh i mean that's really really great yeah and that highlights one of the important things about edibles too is that you can target where the the medicine goes because we're full of endocannabinoid receptors we can activate those locally but we can also go right to the brain where there's lots and lots of them 
and have the and have the if it's a pain issue, say arthritis, you can do, double up and have the brain have it flood the bloodstream and have the brain prevent the pain and then also go straight through the skin, like for arthritis Topically. with the elbows. Yeah. And then you get the localized endocannabinoid activity. It's such a crazy medicine, it just seems to work for everything. <laughs> or I mean it not obviously not everything, but it's I think it really is one of the most useful plants um, for medicine, for medicinal purposes of any of the plants that we know about, definitely for industrial uses, but you know, it's on, it's on all sides of it. So maybe there's something to that whole tree of life thing. It definitely seems to be something that humans, we like a lot. It works well with the old humans. It works well, yeah, with the vertebrates. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah those pets too, they yeah, can be affected. You see stories about ducks. And Do you want any more of that? You want to hit that other side of that? I'm going to hit one after you're done. Yeah, I've seen stories of deworming ducks in France. Oh. Yeah, a guy got arrested for trying to deworm his ducks because he found that cannabis was really effective. Just and he was giving them weed, and that was... Yeah. Oh. Well, there you go. wonder how he came to that conclusion. He's like, give him some of the scraps. The, that's how you get rid of your bunk, feed it to the ducks. Yeah. Uh, I think that there's a history of uh, herbal knowledge. Uh, herbalists that have held that are, isn't widely known, but it's in little pockets. It'd be yeah. really helpful to get that out, further out to the public. Agreed. And to the knowledge it is, it is a herbal medicine. Oh man, no, yeah. it's 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 a in all in many 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 different cultures these herbs have played such a pivotal role throughout history. Like I have a couple books on my bookshelf that look at many a diverse set of cultures that use these plants. But yeah, again, it's. It's something I think that just gets buried underneath of all of our orthodox medicines and all these other things. No. Oh, that thing's not working? Yeah, it's a little clogged. Oh, it's a little clogged. Uh oh. Yeah. It's a brand. It's all fresh and clean, too. Maybe it just needs to be uh, ground Hoped. up a little bit better. There's Katie Cat. She might have to come on for a bong rip in a little bit. Here, maybe you can know, toss me that little bowl and I'll whack it out of there. Yeah, that's a strange one. I may need a poker. Neil Magnuson, would you mind giving me a poker? You might be able to find one just around the corner there. I'm sure there's, around the corner, they'd probably, the staff can probably assist you with a poking device. We just won't be able to smoke any more bond rips without one. So, so we were talking about the first round of uh, the trial. Now. Round one. Round one. And now that was, where they agreed with you the first time around, did they not? The judge. Yes. The judge agreed, and he decided that he would strike the words dried marijuana from the law in right. like the 70 places that it appeared in the medical marijuana law. Just get, get it out of there, and, and, and he thought maybe that would be sufficient. And then anywhere that it said... Mar dried marijuana instead it now referred to everything that's listed in the CDSA underneath dried marijuana which is you know cannabis resin THC CBD CBN and then also a few experimental and uh, little used uh, synthetic cannabinoid drugs right yeah. so that's a that was a big win obviously but then of course the appeal and then the government predictably appealed. But between that, I guess they got tried. We, I waited uh, nine months after we got the decision, because the first judge said, even though what you did was right, these patients, they can have, they can have these things, they should be able to make it themselves. And, but you were making it for this club, and this club's only got like 10% of the members who are medical licenses by the government. And so you should go on trial, and you should, you know, face the potential punishment. So we're like, okay, sounds good. We'll see you in court. We'll call a jury trial and we'll have the defense of medical necessity. Right. And uh, if it, So it becomes a constitutional thing or something. So it, it's, a, it's then the, the actual trial. The constitutional element was what we did call the voir dire, which was the four weeks, but then the trial was the individual as me. Am I, should I still be 
go to have punishment ah, right. because so I didn't two. have a license or whatever. Right. And the, and because you're not a medical guy. Yeah. So yeah. the crown uh, they caved. Uh, they were going to go with it, and then the one of the lawyers who was doing it originally there was two lawyers, but then when he got he got uh, went to hospital. He had a back in pain. Like the guy could have used some edibles. Oh. Like throughout the trial was maybe like, that's oh. what happened. He got some and he's like, oh, I just can't go through with it anymore. Yeah, he, he had real back pain, and we're like, are you okay? You know, maybe you want a cookie. And, 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 <laughs> and he laughed, but uh, <laughs> he, yeah, I'm sure he was probably hitting that up. But the, he he went, and then another lawyer jumped in and said, hey, wait a minute, we're not gonna win. And so I went to Nanaimo and spent about oh, ten minutes in in the trial where. The other, the lawyer from the from the government said uh, to the judge that we can't convict this guy because you already made the decision about that the law is unconstitutional. So these the people who are in the jury they're going to know that, and they're never going to convict this it's guy. Totally now. ruined already. It's yeah. kind of they try to tie this little loop up, like uh, to try they're to make to us blame go, it on you guys. Want to just go right back to the start and then do the trial of me first, so oh, nobody's allowed to, to know read. that oh, we yeah, had the sure. scientist and all this stuff and patient witness. They want to do it all over again and uh, delay the whole thing terribly. Oh no! And uh, that was their plan when they went to the appeal court. Right. Uh, but the appeal judges didn't go along with that. Though. No, one of them did though. One of them out of the, how many? Three of them. Two won. We won, and uh, th so yeah. from three out of three, right? So wow, and so. <laughs> So you guys won in the appeal now, but there's still time for the government to come up with its wacky rules and all this kind of stuff now, right? Well, the, uh, the, the government has ignored the court decision, completely ignored it. Uh, the, the best has been like uh, some of the letters, um, this is my understanding, some of the letters that have gone out to some of the patients in BC um, have mentioned things like that. And then and other patients have been confirm that they're not allowed to have edibles uh, across the province, across right. the country. Um, and the, the government continues to fight with us. I mean, it's kind of ridiculous. They just, they will, they will continue to argue and, and to try to deny what we've already won um, as, much as, as much as possible. And the, the yeah. judge They like just to deny so reality at any yeah. turn, at every turn. Yeah, yeah, the judge, by the end of the trial, the trial judge was so, like, sick of them, like, and he laid <laughs> into the crown, like, the crown had terrible arguments, and he even knew he had terrible arguments, and the, the judge just scowling at him, leaning over his desk, being like, you gonna make that argument, like, that, that, it's just, <laughs> wow, when you actually see, coming down to that, huh? you see the, you see what, the, the arguments of prohibition, what they look like up against pure reason, when you have a, uh, a person whose life is dedicated to actually just the the categorical law, like and, and that, and it's just just he just destroyed them in in, in a, a number of of times. I can't. Oh man, and it's good to see it on that end of it because sometimes you know, like I was at Chris Bennett's case, and it was the total opposite. It was the judge was the one who was being the wacky arguer, and was the prosecutors were kind of more sound. Everybody seemed to be more down to earth than that guy, but. That was uh, some bizarre stuff. But yeah, so that was lucky, uh, though. Um, but so in, in the end, so where are we at now then? So the, the, the government has ignored them on every turn, and you were explaining that whole thing. And then uh, after the decision is made, I mean, we still there's still a ways to go here. It's not over with yet. It's not over with, although uh, you know it could have been over with, but the government has appealed again. And if they didn't appeal, then what we'd have won would have been... It would have been persuasive o only, as the BC Court of Appeal is only persuasive in the rest of the country. Right. But it would have been binding here in the country because it's the highest in the province because it's the highest court in the province. Right. So by appealing, which is pretty important, the, though. It is. Yeah. And because what would happen is if another province tried to go to court with it, you could use that from BC, could you not? Like that would be, they'd be able to bring that in and yeah. essentially they probably just won't arrest anybody for that anymore if it came down to that. But we do know that people are being arrested across the country f with for extracts and derivatives who have licenses. Um, so get a hold of Kirk Tusaw. Yeah, it really, uh, you know, it, it helps to know about our case. So I try to get, a, get it out as much as possible. We write about it in the Cannabis Digest. And we've put all the court, uh, all the documents, including like the complete transcripts of the trial, which was just just tons of stuff. 
but the judge's decisions are really valuable, and that's all on the Cannabis Digest forums. You can check out the court decisions yeah. on there. What a bizarre thing that they can, you know, it's just a matter of paying attention when it comes to law like these things. Mm. Like, if you knew that the case happened out there, oh, well, you can find it and convince the judge, but if, he, if it's, it's not binding on law, then you, shit, if you didn't know about it, well, who knows? It's interesting in Canada that there's a two-headed system, yeah? Like, the parliament makes the laws and the judges bite chunks out of it. Yes. And there's these yeah. back and forth. It and is. they were very... The, the lawyer just went on and on about, oh, you just... You can't make laws, okay? Just don't make any laws. You just can take things away and give us time to fix them and then we'll <laughs> delay and all that. And which is really what they've done. They were begging. And, and now they're taking us to the Supreme Court of Canada... Right. And Which is kind of cool in ways, I mean. That gives us the opportunity to make it our very uh, precedent-setting case for medical marijuana in Canada for all the patients. So really, I, I've been in for five years. Like, this has been a long process. And I've, you know, during that five years, I've known a lot of medical cannabis patients. And, you know, a whole a bunch of them have died, you know? If, yeah. one, of the, if one of them were making their edibles and they, had to, they tried to do this, they, were, they could have already died. Like it's, let's just get past the, this hurdle, you know? Yeah. I would really appreciate, I really like that, um, so that people wouldn't have to be charged at all, wouldn't have to go through trials or, or you know, wait uh, in lieu of my trial even anymore. Um, it's just been, it's been a really long time and I don't think our, our medical patients should be put through that, those kind of, you know, it's like a punishment. And yeah. then the costs, well, it's costs crazy. of trial, the, too. They pick on the people that are the ones who are already suffering. It's just absolutely insane. And it, it's the, the, the gentleman uh, who recently was charged and uh, tried uh, for extracts that we recently learned about in Ontario, he didn't have the money to, to uh, hire a lawyer. And so he plead. Plead out. Right. Oh, so man. It, That's it, how they get you. For, for my case, it's been close to like $100,000. And all that, the burden for, all, for that much money has pretty much entirely fa fallen upon the Victoria Cannabis Buyers Club. And uh, some of the growers have helped out uh, donating, and, but mostly uh, the membership have p helped to pay for this through the prices of the products. And if, if it was the case that, you know, in a, that we didn't have to fight against the, the, the court, um, it would we would be able to provide a much better service for these people as well. Uh, cheaper cannabis. Um, totally. Oh, no, these expenses are huge. It's, it's like huge. we know it around here, having Mark in prison. I mean, all that takes a lot of draw on resources, you know. Yeah. Yeah, for a long time. It takes away from all your other work. But it's, a, it's like necessary, a necessary step. And we're you know, glad that the message can get out. And that's the campaign now is to, to, to really grasp hold of it and put it out. I talked to CBC Power and Politics this morning. Oh, great. And they're doing... Evan a, Solomon? Yeah, Evan Solomon. They're doing a feature on cannabis oil for children with epilepsy next weekend. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, and maybe that's why the Fifth Estate was poking around some of these dispensaries. I heard... It's a popular topic these days. It is. There's so much action, so much happening, so much to know. It's and very if you, true. And you blink... You know, you, f you miss a bunch. And I try to, st I'm doing blogs every day on the Cannabis Digest. But still, like, it's so much oh, to keep just, up with. It's endless. Yeah. All the stories just go on and on, and there's a thousand of them every single day. So let's talk about the media stuff you're doing. You're doing Cannabis Digest, you're blogging, you got the, the newspaper there. And you're also on Time for Hemp Radio yeah. with... My main man there, Casper, is that who's... Uh... I, I do a co-host with Al Graham. Oh, okay. Is, yeah. Is there not... I thought Casper was still around. Is he not... Casper is like... He runs the network. He runs the network. But and he's... Al's like the Canadian uh, correspondent. And there's four of us who co-host with Al. Um, uh, Debbie Stoltz, Giffen in, uh, on the far east coast. Uh, Keith Fagan in... In Calgary, oh, yes. and we had Chantel Arroyo from uh, Montreal there for a bit, and we've got, we had uh, a St a Stephen Farina from the UBC uh, or, or the UVic Club, and cool, and myself. And so that's uh, Monday and Wednesday on uh, timeforhemp.com, six at six p.m. P PST. 
I had Chris Bennett Sixth on there year? a couple of weeks ago. That oh, was, nice. That was great to interview Chris because he's, uh, he's, he really hits the points. He's, yeah, he's awesome. Chris is a great interviewer all the time, as we just saw. Yeah, so that, that's very cool. That's, uh, I know that it's just crazy to see our movement springboarding into such, like, popularity everywhere you look. Like, literally, you can't look into a newspaper without seeing a marijuana story in there. Yeah. And they're just off the charts. And, and it's all positive stuff these days. In, in, in Vancouver here, there's a lot of action. And, like, the, with these uh, big uh, national newspaper, uh, papers and television shows here, I mean, there's a lot of dispensaries. I just visited a bunch of them for the first time as we were dropping off the newspapers and many of them were in their first few years and uh, are, are part of this wave, this youthful wave that's br bringing extracts in, in, a different, in a different focus. Um, there are things like uh, dabbing now, yes. which didn't really happen so long ago. Uh, um, like in the, with the kind of uh, struct, like the glass work that we have now for yeah. it. And the popularity of it has Speaking exploded. Of, I'm gonna hit this ball. But no, Especially it's, it's in so like true. legal states, yeah. And it's that's why it's your case is all the more important because it's dealing with this thing that literally has taken over our movement. Mm. I mean, this this idea of extracting the cannabis, that's what every single when you all you hear is dabs, 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 dabs. So it's all extraction of some shape, form, or fashion. So, you know, it's bizarre that our laws and the Politicians in charge just take so long to catch up. Do you have a lighter over there, anybody? Oh, you got one there? Oh, yeah, well, somehow you lit that last thing. Oh, oh there we go. I nice. Actually, it's the awesome. Awesome. We go here. <laughs> but uh, it's fun being part of the cannabis culture at this time. It's so uh, so much changing, and this it's like you know, like the dawn is coming, and then you're like the day, and the day lasts so long. You know, it could last for a really long time once cannabis is legal. And we could just have a great, a great time with it. So being right now, it's very influential. It feels like we can uh, help to start what is going to be, you know, taken by generations to come. Um, you yeah. know, not well, just in the medical cannabis, but the hemp aspect as well. We see that as part of, all of a future for humanity. Well, and I really, I, I really like what you said there because I feel like right now is this pivotal moment where we have to take control of the reins or the, you know, somebody's going to do it. And if it's not us, it's going to be the people who don't necessarily have our community in mind. Mm. And so, like last night, uh, I haven't actually slept. Yeah, here, Neil. I, uh, I slept for about, a, about 45, 50 minutes this afternoon because I was up all night working on liberalsforlegalization.nationbuilder.com which is a pretty awesome nation builder site that uh, incorporates a whole bunch of stuff. Now, I, as you know, whoever's watching this show, I am now a Liberal Party of Canada member. I am a proud liberal now, so I'm a JT liberal, Justin Trudeau's party. I want to elect Jody Emery in the Vancouver East riding. I'm one of her campaign managers, and uh, I'm also one of the organizers of what's known as Liberals for Legalization. So this is a group of us who are liberals, who within the party want to make sure that the liberals do what they say they're going to do, legalize pot, and also uh, do it with our community in mind in a way that's fair, decent. We want regulations, but we won't, don't want them to be too overbearing. And we want to make sure that we have things like home growing and other stuff. So there's a lot of things that uh, within the liberal party, I think that there needs to be some strong people making waves and doing that kind of thing. You know, it, as Neil Magnuson, who is holding this up for me, knows, just be, being at city council at the right few moments makes all the difference with some of this stuff. So the same thing is, uh, happens with making policies within these parties. And it looks like the liberals will be the next party to form government. And they might even have a majority. They're so damn popular right now. Yeah. So if uh, you guys are out there and you're watching this show, go to Liberals for Legalization dot nationbuilder.com and if you're a liberal sign up and if you're not a liberal sign up and then go and sign up as a liberal and become one but if you if you don't feel like paying the twenty dollars for two years yet just check it out see what you think volunteer for us get the hang of things and uh, see what you like but anyways um that was my rambling on about the there'll liberals be there. there'll be work for cannabis activists after legalization as we find out in washington state
You know, they have legalization there, but it's very, very narrow. And so you can, uh, you know, get some really expensive cannabis from a shop and walk away and not, you know, be, yeah, worry about being arrested and then smoke it in private. But that's, that's very limited. And oh, a lot totally. of people aren't going to bother doing yeah. that. Just because it's called legalization doesn't mean they won't do certain things like put a five nanogram blood limit on it. And, they, you know, and there's a bunch of other things that could happen. Um, we want to make sure that sound scientific policies are the ones that are getting passed and put through when the stuff actually becomes law. Yeah. Um, but also, I think that there's something to be said for this idea that I think that the pot community should support the liberals because it's the first time that a national party in Canada has ever supported our cause 100% and said they want to legalize marijuana outright. They've, their policy paper was voted on by over 70% of the members of the party. That It has things in it like setting up stores and home growing. So it's something that we can really embrace as a community. Yeah. And, uh, it can help the liberals out a lot, it too. It can help and the liberals out. You make sure that they've got their lines down, you know? Yeah. Like, they know what to say. Yeah. But why don't we get... become part of the next government? Like, we know those liberals are gonna, right? they're gonna win. We should take a chunk of that. We should get a piece of that. Because it's open for the taking right now. It really is. These guys, they don't even, they're gonna be, they're gonna have their damn hands full with all the power they have. Because they're gonna scoop up a lot of it because they're way too popular. So we gotta get some of that for our community and make sure that these guys do what we want. Now, even just in this, this morning when I set this Nation Builder thing up, I had it up for like four hours, shared it around a bit. It already had like 150 people signed up in a matter of a couple hours and people that are willing to volunteer in their area. There was over a dozen of those people that are actually willing to go out and pound the pavement. So we know our community is thirsty to go out and do this stuff. Yes. It's just a matter of, uh, of finding things for people to actually do, and there's a lot of things people can do. Yeah, there's the a Sensible lot of BC campaign was a good example of an organized, m organized uh, political movement for uh, cannabis change. And that is Big a, time. That was a lot of people, even though it didn't succeed, they got like 200,000, something yeah. like that. I mean, right, and they're still working towards another one coming yeah. up soon. So. so just keep up the work, right? It's, it's inevitable. And yeah. now, th th another fresh generation that we are uh, bringing the energy to the to this movement, and so, yeah, get it, get involved. We met some. I was at the liberal meeting last night and yeah. met some young guys who were, you know, really clearly spoken and positive, uh, but also, you know, they know what they're doing with politics and they know exactly what they're doing. So, yeah, it's uh, no, nice I to be seeing these mergers in some way. For me, it, it provides me, like we're talking about th this idea of spirituality on the show today a lot. We're talking about how plants can provide this other perspective and alternative and, you know, they're used as a sacred, a sacred uh, sacrament. I guess that's a little uh, sacred and sacrament. They're both kind of the same thing there. They're used as this device and, and you use them in social in a social way with other people and stuff and that provides you with this other cool thing I think activism itself and getting together with other people and fighting for a cause that you believe in has a similar spiritual element and a, serious, a, a similar effect on the body of just being there and doing those things mm -hmm. it provides you with this like transcendence of something and I can't explain exactly what it is but you feel more whole when you're doing this thing that you believe and when you're out there doing it with other people yeah so uh, as far as like religion and I like uh, the idea of a, bo a bodhisattva of that being somebody who's yes. really high and they want to help you know like yeah. they, they've kind of transcended <laughs> death yes. um, but now they've realized that they want other people to reach this place too because yeah. it's not really that much fun by yourself yeah it's more fun to be high with other people and, and imagine if you could be high with everybody yeah, and this could be really fun too, like cannabis, um, uh, like we do in Victoria when we have rallies. There's a game show that Ted puts on, Reach for the Pot. I love it. So, th and they, they do that right under the court steps of the courthouse and they put up sheets and a hot box underneath the steps of the courthouse. And they've been doing that for years. And there's been many people who have been affected by that, myself being one of them, just uh, going through that, almost like uh, just passing th through, through that and being educated and realizing. And then once I've realized, I can then process it myself and through my own creativity and offer something unique. And everybody, ha we have a lot of creative people 
uh, cannabis helps to bring that out in people, and uh, it, certainly I would be an example of that too. I just finished writing an epic, well, I wrote it a few months ago, and I'm working with an illustrator right now on an epic uh, narrative uh, poem uh, that's about legalizing extracts in a mythic land with uh, evil priests and a uh, dumbfounded king and uh, reluctant heroes cool. and serpents and it's all mirroring my experience. So Very it, cool. So that'll be something oh, I'll bring over one of these. One. Uh, in a couple fantastic. of months, it'll be finished, and we'll bring that over, and it'll be, it's going to be awesome. I got this guy cool. working on the illustrations who's wor who did the par part of The Wall, and Pink Floyd's The Wall. Oh, my goodness. And uh, wow. hev Heavy Metal, if you've seen the Heavy Metal oh, yeah. movie, he, he worked in, in that, and as, as well as another a lot of what? Sort of psychedelic. That's amazing, and, man. Wow. And, uh, That's so, exciting. So this, there's just very much inspiration embedded in that, and creativity and spirituality all kind of, uh, you know, if, for, for people like you saw, um, uh, the first gentleman that was up here had a uh, ayahuasca shirt on with the Shipibo pattern. And the people, the Shipibo, when they have the ayahuasca and they see these patterns, they then spend a lot of time weaving these patterns into something. They're spending time engaged in a creative part of their spirit, this is part of their spiritual life. And these things also in the cannabis community you know, is very much so. I mean, weaving and cannabis and stories and those kind of things is very ancient. Um, so easy for us to make uh, clothes out of it uh, early on and use, make mats out of it and very much uh, like the earlier paper and all that, so. Right. Well, and it's a weird thing that this plant that allows us this mystical sort of transcendence or entertaining this divine sort of communication is also such an industrious, productive, produ you know, it's prolific everywhere. It allows us to do these things. And so there's this combination of things that are happening. And I find this myself. And Stephen and I were talking about this earlier on the show where I use cannabis to work all the time. Mm. And there's this relationship between taking my cannabis and focusing on this task that I'm trying to accomplish, whatever that may be, and whether if that's some sort of monotonous task of doing the same repetitive behavior over and over again, or whether it's a creative task of doing something that's different every time. Mm. It's still this sort of working relationship with cannabis. And I, I kind of see how throughout history that must have just naturally come out of working with these plants sometimes. You know, when you're working with plants and you're doing things with them, you, you start to absorb these resins and things like that. So, yeah. you know, you, ha you, gain, you have these relationships where they turn into this sort of and combination for, of things. For all of history, using it as a food as well. We wouldn't right. have had this special uh, no THC hemp we've got today. You know? right. It takes quite a bit of effort to make sure that uh, it, THC doesn't just break out amongst those things. You know, they got these scientists. They didn't have that in the past. So if you just eaten hemp seed Neither. porridge, then you were eating hemp seed porridge with hash in it. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it wasn't so easy to just have it all. But the hash, I mean, the, like I, I've read some things about the old cannabis fields. Some of the studies that have been done on it uh, would have been much more like, uh, like the, more like the CBD strains, the one-to-one -one right. ratio stuff that's coming out these days than right. than the real hydroponic. You wouldn't be feeling any pain. Yeah, yeah. We, we wouldn't have been so uh, much of a a, a mega buzz, like right. It would have been. Heavy on the, like, yeah, CBD side of things. Yeah. But, yeah, now, actually, Dana Larson recently has written some fascinating articles. Now, I can't remember. Is this the one I've read in secret, or is this published? Oh, shit, I forget. Maybe I'm spilling the beans here. But, no, Dana's, I think this one's published, about the, uh, the amount of raw resin that could come from these hemp producers just right. here in Canada. A billion yeah. grams. It's <laughs> unbelievable. And that stuff can yeah, be right put that. to good use for medicine. It's unbelievable that it just goes to waste, but... Yeah, it's uh, one of those things. One day, all of that stuff, we won't be wasting any of these things. Man, when I think of all of the, ne the renewable resource possibilities with hemp and just, I mean, in general, renewable resources that we're not utilizing, it makes me shudder. It obvious, it's obvious to me that there's some powerful people that don't want those things to happen or we'd be doing it. Yeah. I mean, it's just... I think if we had, when we have... Uh, the ability to, to play around with this, and the industries do, I think they'll, cannabis is going to sneak into all kinds of industries, like, like the cosmetics industry. Yes. And that, like, I yeah, think... Yeah, that's coming real soon. The creams yeah. alone. Yeah. 
yeah, just the, and I mean, for its therapeutic value, but also, yeah, they're, you know, this it sense, mixes all boundaries. Uh, cannabis has an amazing ability to, to produce many different kinds of terpenes, so you can have different smells. Yeah. And I get kinds of cannabis which smell like nothing else. Like, this is its own combination I haven't smelled anywhere else. And it's yeah. so nice, I think, that women uh, would use it as perfume. Right. And if they did, it would be, I'd be attracted to that. Because <laughs> it's so nice. You, open, you get some of this in the room and people start like, oh, you know, it's something imbe in, embedded in the terpene profiles of some of these uh, cultivated plants that we have uh, in the medical dispensaries yeah. we, when we've got these, these really dedicated kind of scientific approach of, of the growers there. Uh, you start to really see what's possible. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I have a, there's a chart on the wall upstairs just outside of my office that shows Ethan Russo's, there's a terpene chart that he had published with a bunch of really interesting stuff that shows them all rated up next to each other and everything. It's worth taking a peek at. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, well, I guess we should uh, wrap this up. What time is it? We've been sort of drifting off here. It's already after 6 o'clock. My goodness, my goodness. Yeah, it's dinner time. Two hours and eight minutes. The that's culture so high bad. tonight. Culture high tonight? Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. 7 o'clock. And I still have Jason to bring on the show, too. But, right. Owen, thank you so much for coming on. Now, wait a second here. Did we get through our whole story? Did we finally get to the end and where we are? I guess uh, we kind of did, didn't we? Next thing you'll find out, and you can go to the CannabisDigest.ca for updates. Uh, I'm writing blogs there every week. The next thing you'll find out is when the dates are for the Supreme Court challenge. And at that point, we're going right. to start to push some fundraising uh, to, in order to uh, make a bit of a media campaign out of it as well as to cover some of the costs for all of the uh, lawyers that we have to... we got to get one in Ottawa and we got to fly Kirk out there and everything, so... Nice. So we're going to push it once we find out more about when the Supreme Court challenge is going to go down. Excellent. And now, how about uh, the edibles? Are you still whipping up? Or can we talk about that? I don't know if you're still... Uh... I don't work at the Cannabis Buyers Club anymore, no. uh, although... Uh, I do work with the Cannabis Digest, which is this kind of associated, right. and uh, help by... You make them cookies. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, talk, I now talk about cookies and describe <laughs> why the cookies are so good and who might want to use the cookies and when yes. and where, and this cover some all of these legit. things. All Yeah, all, all, it's mo mostly media stuff for me these days, but uh, I see a future in some more really interesting... Um, you know, apothecary style cannabis stuff. Right. Yeah. Now, now, just let's. Can we clear this up? This, the gray area that exists now for edibles. I mean, there are people actually in this sort of gray area. If they get caught with edibles, they're probably going to be okay as it stands. That's what the. Uh, that's that's exactly that's what the, what the, the crown was said. Oh, they'll probably be fine. Uh, we probably won't arrest them. But we're them. not. No, we're <laughs> not quite sure. Or? But we could. Yeah, and they, and they could still, though, and they, but they probably won't, though. In, in uh, B.C., it's, it's, I think it's insurmountable because we have pushed it through the B.C. process completely. Yeah, in Canada-wide, I think that they still, have to, um, they still have to be harassed and arrested or dragged down to the police station or whatever, right. and that before the police officers get the word from the jurisprudence that... You know, you probably should not pursue yeah, charges. Right or, after they get a bunch of those, they'll be like, "Stop wasting your time." And 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 then may, or maybe the the province, that particular province, will want to see a challenge to it. Right. And uh, they could then do that. And so right. that would, but that would then sit and wait for the Supreme Court of Canada decision, which so, is for on your what you're heading up to next. Eh? Yeah. So Canada wide, right. everyone can pretty much tuck in behind the wings of this. Right. Decision for a little type. while here, anyways, and then it means that no judges they'll just be like, Okay, we gotta wait, so you'd be sitting pretty till then, kind of thing. Yeah, it's it's, a, it's something that actually Kirk and that uh, the lawyers they're always working on in the background, so uh, nothing is for sure. And Kirk is very, you know, tight lipped and he's very careful about what he says, yeah. Um, you know. But he, he would agree that he thinks that it's fairly safe for people to, uh, to use the extracts, to make the extract. It should be. Yeah. The, that, would, that was what we understood as the intention of the, 
the decision, but there's always seems to, the government seems to find a reason to debate uh, things and like uh, right. the language may not be clear enough for them and they've... It's always oh. so vague, just the right amount of vagueness that they can do whatever the fuck they want to you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, Neil, for sure. Um, so, Owen Smith, thank you very much, my Thanks, friend. Thanks, Jeremiah. Fantastic to have you on. Yeah, it was great. Really appreciate it. And I wish you the best of luck with the, the future court battle there. We'll definitely have you back on to talk about all that stuff Love to. when you're in the neighborhood. And check out CannabisDigest.ca and also TimeForHemp.com. Dot com. TimeForHemp.com. Yeah, and look out for The Herb of Life That's coming right. soon. The Herb of Life. Herb That's of life. the book? That's the book. That's the book. That's the fantasy oh, adventure. Oh, yes. That's so, it's it's like a fun. graphic novel, though. Yeah. 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 Fantastic. All right, so Neil's managing to squeeze in here before Jason somehow now. He's a, all right. Well, we got to put the uh, whip into... Somebody's got the hook. Yeah, I just want a minute Oh, here. what about you, Mr. Hashman over here? He still hasn't been over here. I haven't even had a rip of that There's hash yet. There's been a distinct last, lack of cannabis in this part of the studio. I know. What the fuck's going on over here, Neil? Yeah. How are um, you? I'm good. You know, I was out today at uh, some dispensaries and places uh, promoting Jody Emery as, uh, to try to get her nomination and well, stuff. Well, that's mighty fine, yeah. And I talked to uh, Terry Raycroft at the MCRCI. That's right. And, you know, they've got a thing going on, John Conroy, uh, where they're giving people uh, Regulation 53 exemptions. I think it's 53. It might be 43. 43? 56? Um, which is a, no, it's not a 56 exemption. It's through the Narcotic Control Act, but it, uh, it essentially gives you the legal right to have cannabis that you did not purchase from the LPs. So for those people out there that uh, aren't covered by the Allard injunction, that don't like the whole MMPR and don't want to go through an LP, go see Terry at the MCRCI at uh, Nanaimo and Hastings How there. How did they get, that's a weird one. I've you know, never heard they, of You'd have to before. talk to John Conroy and, and Terry to get, to, you know, better details of what they're actually doing. But right. I was very intrigued to hear that, and that's I thought it was important to get that message out there. Well, so, thanks, uh, Neil. That's a very interesting one. I hadn't heard of that before, but uh, we'll look into that. I'd like to cool. maybe find out about that myself. And um, sign up for the Liberal Party, and help yeah. Jody Emery get her nomination by uh, signing up for the Liberal Party and saying sign that you're doing it party. because of that. And, and if you live in the East Vancouver riding, especially sign up as a member and, and do that on behalf of Jody and come to the nomination meeting so yes. that we can nominate her as and the go candidate. Go to liberalsforlegalization.com nationbuilder.com right. liberalsforlegalization.nationbuilder.com and if you do that and you become a liberal for legalization you get into the vapor lounge every Monday night for free cool and so this is something really exciting that we can do now in this you know normal lag time yeah. in, in what we do as activists in here in Vancouver so get involved with Jody's campaign and, and thanks Jeremy. we had a really successful meeting just last night was yes, it, it last was last night, night. Yeah. I, my time's all screwed up but yeah, we uh, had a meeting here in the building at 307 West Hastings here in Vancouver, our campaign headquarters for the Jody Emery for Vancouver East campaign. And it was great. We had like actually a half decent turnout, even yeah. though we just had a few days of promoting our little core meeting. Yeah. Um, but next time it'll be an even larger meeting. We've already got a lot of people on our list, so um, we're really pleased to see everybody showing such an amazing amount of support for the whole campaign. We think it's going to be aboundingly popular. Can you imagine, you know, Jody Emery as an MP representing oh, our, our issues? It. I'm imagining it every day. I, it I think it's going to be happen. reality. Uh, I think Jody has a very good chance of beating Libby Davies. I think that, you know, if Libby, Libby might even decide not to run, but I think if Libby does run, um, Jody has a really good chance of taking her on. Libby's been there for 16 years, and I think the riding, it's time for something new in the riding. The NDP is not allowing Libby to be Libby. That's right. That's the problem That's right the problem. now. Jody really is the new Libby. Libby can't even be Libby. Yeah. So everybody who loves Libby is better off with Jody because you're not going to get Lib what Libby is with Libby. That you're going to get Thomas Mulcair's heavy hand with a velvet glove on. It's time for Jody Emery. Yeah. Get get behind the campaign. Let's have some fun. It's exciting. Thanks, Jeremiah. Thanks, Neil, for coming on. Always uh, good to have you doing everything that you do. As you always do, Mr. Jason Wilcox. Another star yeah, activist can you here. Move this over just a little bit, like where it's still standing. Yeah, sure. Just because it's covering the coalition pins there. Here, let's put it right there. Fabulous. That's probably good. I don't. It doesn't even. Even if it doesn't stand, you know what? People oh, know. People know that Jody is here. All right. Okay. There you go. 
We're making a stand here. There's Jody. All right. She can stand in the corner there. So let's get into this a little bit. So, make sure yeah. you have that microphone in hand or near you. All so, right, in uh, hand. People hear me? Good. Oh, Let's talk about liberals. Nice and clear. Let's talk about Section 53 and what that exactly means. Okay, yeah, means. so what's this new Section 53 deal? It's not new. Section 53. Well, it's not new, but. Uh, it, it's, a section, it's a section of the old narcotics control regulations. At the same time, if you look at the top of the form, download it from Health Canada, it says MMPR. It means that you're signing up for a licensed producer to be part of the new federal scheme. If that's your choice, go that direction. If you're protected under the injunction, there's no need for you to see a doctor or to do nothing until the courts decide the constitutionality of that bullshit program. So on that note, and as far as the Liberals go, Tell me, have they said they're going to give us gardens? Officially, Justice gardens? Camp? Yeah. Justice well, Camp. I don't know if he's announced that in a speech, but in the policy paper that's been voted on by over 70% of the party at their annual meeting, it talks about home growing in it. And, of course, as part of everything that they've been talking about, they say the, the only way to really do it is to undercut the black market. Yeah, just, speak, just speak right, right up. I want to really hear this. I want to make people understand this because it's important. Yeah. Um, like, I want to support the liberals. I really do. I would yeah. love to have Justin come out and say, you know what? You know, I've heard people online say, well, he allured that he would like to see Colorado. So would I. God right, well, damn it, I want legalization. How do, you make, how do you make Justin do it? Do you take part in what's happening and you take over the party and you take you basically force them to I, do it? Or do you say and not support him? So that's I know, no, I but I, I don't say don't support him. What I do say is I say don't allow us to become Washington State. Don't allow us to legalize and well, then have to protest the very legalization yourself, that we do. Don't allow yourself to become it. That's just it. Allow gardens to be in this country because... Every other country in the we world is doing it. We have to become the Liberal Party. We have to become the parties that are going to be the ones who are making these laws so that we can decide exactly what you're talking That's about. That's just it. Now, if the cannabis activists out there want to get behind it, they can do that. I say vote anything but conservative. I'm not a politician. I'm into law. I enjoy the Constitution of Canada. We've got the government under a restraining order. We've got them set for trial. You know, and we intend to win this constitutional right to reasonable access, be in our gardens. That's the way we do it. No politician has done shit for cannabis in this country, ever. That's a fact. No uh, one. But not for medical patients. That, that's little, not one. That's a little hyperbolic. No, not one. They no. have made little jabs and promises and then they let us down. No, I'm all for Overall, it. I, I, ho I, I, hope that they, I hope that they do it. And I hope Jody gets into office because at least it's one of our own. And we can trust that she's going to do what's right. I'm, I know Mark's position is to support the patients with plants. Now, what matters is that people understand, like if they look at johnconroy.com, look at the video and decide for yourself what John says under section 15 of the charter. If medical patients in this country win the constitutional right to grow in our house, so will you be able to grow when we legalize. That's a goddamn right and that's the freaking law. Look at that before you start looking at section 53 lies because that's a way into the MMPR and I'm not down with the MMPR until it becomes constitutionally sound for medical patients. Fuck all that bullshit. And I hope that the liberals actually listen because I haven't heard a liberal speaker talk about medical patients' rights. Or the fact that patients are suing the government for breaching their privacy. Or the fact that the patients are under duress about their gardens. I haven't heard anything about the ethical speech. Well, who cares? Only, what, 40,000 of us, right? No big deal. All of us know five people. And as people have come to realize, medical patients have a very strong voice. And we are united. And we are organized. We raised $183,000 to restrain the government. And it's been done. No politician helped us. No organization helped us. Medical patients clawed and fought since 2012. Have you guys reached out to any politicians? Oh, no, but party? yeah, we have. Dana Larson. Happily, Dana Larson stepped up. No, and Dana, no, I mean, Dana the, I mean the coalition. I mean you guys. Oh, yeah, we've asked parties. We, I've said to the Liberal Party, go ahead and donate. I will love to support any party that steps up. Even speak. It might be. Even speak about the medical patients in this country that are under duress. I hear from them every day. Nobody really cares because it's only so many medical patients. But at be. the same time, they're suffering. And they should hear from a politician. You want that vote? You want that freaking ethical vote? I'm down for that. I'm all for it. I'm all for legalization, but I'm not going to sell out Canada under a false flag that says we're going to allow gardens until they actually say they're going to do it. You don't freaking legalize and then fix it later. It's twice as hard to reverse something once it's done. Not, we learned I that with that, the MMAR. We learned that, it with the MMPR. It's costed us millions to fight them. I it's costing us a quarter million dollars to fight them right now. And we're medical patients. To fight who? The federal government of Canada. Now it's right. going to drop down when we legalize to the provincial formularies. Question is, 
which party is actually going to support. Now, tax and control and regulate is exactly what they want in Washington, and the people are pushing back because medical patients can grow and people that are healthy like yourself cannot. Now, that is not right. I believe that it should be equal. Like in Canada, Section 15, the Charter says we're all equal before and under the Charter. Again, go to johnconway.com, click on the litigation button, watch the damn video, go to the end of it, and look at the debate that I have with John on bringing our Washington State's model into Canada. It will not happen. He, what, they he, cannot legalize in this country debate? if he, patients are allowed to grow. So you yeah. should get behind the MMAR Coalition Against Repeal. Support us. Donate. Donate directly to John Conway because all the money goes to the same fight. But if we win the right to grow now, it'll be a constitutional right for this country and for our kids in the future. And God damn it, I hope them politicians get behind it. On that note, I'm out. <laughs> all right. Go. That's Jason Wilcox. Always uh, a slice when he's on. A passionate guy. <laughs> I gotta get some hash right now. I'm gonna bring He's it over. Always, uh, I'm not sure quite who it is out there that uh, that that he's exactly speaking directly to, but there's somebody. Yeah, I, I think that uh, yeah, we have to really work on a bunch of different stripes. There's through the courts. There's through the litigation. There's through the legislation. There's through the social networking and the social proof of our friends and relatives. There's many different avenues that we have to go down in order to really get cannabis to be fully accepted and destigmatized. But yes. This is what we fight for. Mmm. That's quite delicious. Um, yeah. On that note. I want. I wanted to try some of your hash, Johnny B. It's okay. good to have you sit next to me again here. Oh, be careful with this thing. This table's not quite perfect. But uh, is that the? That's the watermelon that we were sniffing at before. That's actually the Afghan. It's like I trimmed it up this morning and it was killer. Oh, this um, is the House Afghan. of the Great Gardener. Just like, oh. yeah, I got a phenol from, of course, Bubble Man and oh, uh, that came from, and funky. it's funky. I know. So we'll hit you with some hash with that. That's got the funk. So, but uh, and we're we're doing lots of talking about extraction, the spiritual, yeah. and all kinds of stuff. And That's I want to make mention of this um of this little extraction we have here, and it's um it's actually uh, some limine oil mixed with myrrh and cinnamon, and uh, and of course bubble hash or dry sift. Um, and this is used for help. Uh, well, uh, Mike with his cancer. So it's uh, something we were talking about and talking about more of extractions and why we need extractions. Have a smell. That's made by, um, well, it's a, it's a lean mean extraction. I don't want to push down. It. Yeah. And we're doing lots about that. And if, oh. uh, it's about uh, THC versus phenol cancer. Mm. Mike's story on Facebook. Wow. Um, you can Aromatic. definitely find out more about what uh, we're doing with that. Strong. So that's very cool. But you yeah. also have, uh, you brought into the, my office yesterday or the day before or something like that, uh, your little round balls of goodness there. And I just wanted you to show that off, that like silky white snowy stuff. That's why I was yelling at you across the room. Here, here it about. comes. So he's going to be just very Just don't careful. sneeze or drop any of it out of there. Yeah. There's Katie. Katie's going to have to come over for a bong rip soon. Very nice. That looked good. This, this would be Thanks, the Brian. stuff right here. There's Vanna Bryan now. Oh. Of course, Katie. Who it showed is? Up. It's it's Michelle is in the house. Hi, Michelle. I'm doing a live show. What's that? Hello there. Um, so, what do you got? That's the stuff. That's the stuff. Hi, Katie. That Kat. would be the stuff. It was your birthday two days ago, Katie Cat. She's finally 18. Oh yeah. 18 though. Yeah. Wow. She's finally legal. Yeah, now those Snapchats you send me are actually, I would get pop pop. Snapchats? What are those? Just teasing. <laughs> okay, so I brought my whole table over here. You did? I, I can see a lot of stuff on that table now. Wait. Well, it was one, easy to two, transport. Three, four, table. five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. I see at least twenty containers, maybe more. Look 20. at this nice med tainer You're box. You're the container man. And it's I not know. just med tainers either. Every, every jar is listed. Oh, yeah. 
So actually, if I took all the lids off, then we get a good view. So here, that's a lot of stuff. So um, this is the Barbara. Oh, you were close there. Oh yeah. <coughs> Next up is the Astro Boy. Oh, Purdy. You want a bong rip? Oh, here. Hiya. Oh, yeah. How was your birthday? One up after this one is. Uh, Did you smoke this is the Medicush. <laughs> my, uh, actually, my 14 year old sister bought me a bong for my birthday. Your 14 year old sister bought you a bong for your birthday, Katie. And I was like, who the hell sold my 14 year old sister? That looks good. So I don't know how all of a sudden I'm pulling See all later, my man. weed here, Jason but this is what's happening. Out the posse's hitting Jason's the road. Jason's out of here. Peace, guys. Thanks for coming Supporting. on the show. It's awesome. That's Peace. right. Coalition against. Wait, wait. Let's. What's the full email? MMAR, MMAR coalition, coalition against, against repeal. repeal. Dot org or dot com. Um, I think it's dot com. Okay. That's a long, that's a mouthful of an email. Or Somehow, a like address. I said, I'm pulling out all Here. my jars of weed now. This is the um, Haley's Comet. So you this is the high that. heavy CBD strain that we talk about. Where's the lighter? How's Haley's that Comet. Oh, now, I've never we, tried we it. We have to be focusing on I've never actually tried up. this. Haven't? I know a lot of people I said that. I guess it's for so. pain, not getting high necessarily. It's high CBD, um, high There's low Katie. GDC. Get her in the shot. Do you don't want to miss this. Very important. There's lighter. She has no head in the shot, though. This is my favorite. There you go. There you go. Now you're, now you're head full. Are you ready? Headed. I'll light the bong. Her new tattoo that she has on her arm that has a ghost on it that says, Hi, Michelle, that says boo, or it says boobs. And it's like a haughty ghost taking her clothes off, and she's got, like, boobs underneath. I'm trying here. What's in there? Is that what I left on there? Or is that what you put there? I just loaded that up myself with whatever I had in here, which I don't really... Here. That was the uh, watermelon. Yeah. There's a hash in there for you. <laughs> Biggity bam. So I can actually say that um, I actually was smoking some of... Uh, this Barbara dry sift the other day, we patted it out and it gave me a little spiritual uh, uplift. Oh, it was that's quite the theme amazing. Of the show today is our spiritual, spiritual uplifting. It is, and that's what we're all. talking about. We're talking about. I'm uh, not talking about it very well, but. I know, that's why I had to bring it back to you. Uh, that would be a big negatory. Big oh, we're kind of live here. Would you, would you like a bong rip? I would love to. Let's see that. Oh, okay. So there's actually. Yeah, we gotta wait. Yeah, no, we he doesn't want to touch it if she's got it. Whole, hey, oh wow! Slow down. Uh, Why are you so they hate each other. So there's actually a spiritual hit in this bong for you, if you would like. Oh sure. And I, I would can be happy to take that. You, know? you want to take this uh, sure. away from me? You know what? Sure, I, take that. I don't really hit it can Dutch be my too bong much. caddy. The bong caddy. This one's fancy. And, and what about um, you, Michelle? Are you a on the air type of girl or not today? Oh, yeah. well, that's nice. But would you come on the air and have with smoke marijuana? Or is that a bad thing to do? I, I, you have before, I know. I just wasn't sure if that's still cool. Are you oh, well, that's okay. So micro dosage, then. You've got to take very low dosages for driving. So this Massive way you're able to maintain a good little you know, legal limit of cannabinoids in your system, which we Huge don't know what it is. But micro dosing is the way of the future. So it's small amounts more times a day. How does that work? Any comments? Ooh. You know what? It, it beats a microdose. It beats a microdose? Yeah, that's more of a... The way of the future. Well, no, it's You're just... You're welcome you know, to come we... sit on the couch if you want, Michelle. Do you want to come sit on the couch? Come on the show. You might as well if you want to. You don't have to. You don't have to do anything you don't want to. <laughs> Brian, could you turn the camera back a little that way? Right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah, you got it. Beautiful. Couldn't be better. <laughs> I just, I Hi, got Michelle. Hello. How are you? Good. There might be a microphone over there for you. Work? Yeah, could you yeah, coordinate that for the lovely young lady over here? 
my friend, Jesus very, Warren very Warren. good friend, Michelle. Hello. How are you, Michelle? Wait, let me get the ball. I'm great, but there's terrible traffic out there right now. Terrible traffic Too out there? So many accidents. There's like 12 oh. cops on your street. Really? Yeah. That's weird. I live in Amherst. Hope they're not. Here, then. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so um, if anybody has a place I can stay at tonight, please uh, <laughs> let me know. Oh, watch that bong there, bong caddy. Okay, we got... Here, you want me to be your microphone stand We caddy? have a lot of hash out here, I'm <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Um, all right. So, what do you guys so think about Michelle, uh, spiritual. We're talking about so, yeah, how, we've been how doing spiritual cannabis is spiritual, spiritual show today. I can't um, say that word for some reason, though. What? Well, that's because <laughs> of that. You just did a hash shoot. He's got slow. some very spiritual stuff going on. It's been two and a half hours of live TV here. It's a so. nice thing. All right. Live internet TV. Mac Daddy lurking in the background there. Yeah. Are you trying to get it yourself a bong rip? Is that what was happening? Oh, I think that. Well, she does that. She's a little cuter than you, but I mean, you're pretty cute too, of course. But yeah, but yeah, I might go. You could better get back to work there, hustler. Yeah. Better. Nah. Everybody forgot about you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I bet you'll be back in five minutes. I'm. I'm gonna bet that. All right, so actually, one thing I was going to do for our audience at home was play that little Chris Bennett thing. And if we're going to wrap the show up at our scheduled three-hour time slot, I'm going to have to do that pretty quick here or uh, we're not going to make it. Owen, out of here. It was very nice having you on the show. Thank you so much to Owen Smith for coming on. It was a really enlightening conversation about the whole thing. and uh, You know how to get a hold of yeah, we should uh, Love to talk to you, man. know some more stuff soon about that whole case. We'll have you back again soon, Owen. And we'll be tuning in on Time for Him and at CannabisDigest.ca and in the actual hardcore print version if you're here in British Columbia. Hardcore print version. Wave that in front of the camera there. Oh, yeah. I know. I just paid There you go. That's a great cover. I love the covers you guys have. They're so fantastic. Oh, Georgia Tunes. She's amazing. A lot of great artists. Oh, that's okay. Don't worry about that. We got oh Jody's on. We got Jody there too. All right, thanks, man. Right. So, Michelle, is she getting high over there? Did no, we were talking him? about the messenger and the message. And we're talking about hash and and the difference that's how that they Johnny go into their heads and and. Like so, you want to see all my containers? No. I know. It's very colorful. And all Let me show you my containers. <laughs> yeah, he's got quite the selection of those yeah, containers over there. You would like, you know. yeah. um, so, I don't. yeah, somebody in the chat said, yeah, I have to eat something soon. The vegetarian zombie said you have to eat something soon. I guess that would be something vegetarian. Well, you know what? Um, I'm also starving. Oh, my God. That's why I came down. I got dinner with you. We should go have dinner. Oh, wait, Let's go to White Spot. You want to go please. to White Spot? Yeah. Oh, yes, please go. Oh, man, they make a great <laughs> Chipotle chicken wrap. You owe me a dinner, remember? Oh, I owe, according to Corey, I owe her a dinner. Well, we'll have to do that one day. Now we're, um, we're not micro-dabbing. We're um, hash. We're macro-dabbing. This is the big picture, big picture data. So, of course, this is, uh, I was just talking about how this is the holy grail of hash. It's what you get when you first cut down your ganja when it's hanging in that, that epic first bounce. Talk about it a lot, about how I'd say 99% of the girls out there throw it away because they don't know what they're missing. So, um, yeah, good stuff on that. It's so tasty. It melts like water. It's definitely epic, and it's just when you first... You do that little trim. There's more to it. There's different ways of getting your Ooh. medicine. This is just uh, my favorite and first way. That's some hardcore shit. It is. It's it's pretty nice. You know what? And being able this to is this, the this is like all the different crossover the hash? spiritual crossover. Yeah, you start seeing the future with this stuff. Or oh, there's a past. few different things. I can give you yeah. two more. It's and like we 2001. It's gonna be your best dinner ever. Ah, yeah. That's that's gonna be one hell of a Chipotle chicken wrap. <laughs> Tastes delicious. <laughs> so, okay, we really the best should. Best definitely taking everyone. You're getting a little spiritual uplifting here before the end of your spiritual show. Yeah. So, what about Michelle? Um, Is she going to hammer one of these things back or what? Are you going to do this, Michelle? No. You want to do this? No? You're going to take it easy? Oh, you're, ta- you're driving me to dinner. Okay, well, then you better be um, a good can't, girl. Uh, That's probably smart. Probably walk there. We could walk. I was just oh, offering this really it's good. Just it's, there's one right there. But if we yeah. want to drive closer to my house, then, yeah, we should probably... 
Oh, he might okay. be close. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> John. Yeah, and you're not invited either. No, no, I'm actually. Yeah. Um, I, I have other plans. I'm gonna stay here and smoke. No, we're hash. taking your hash, though. I'm just teasing. Yeah, Johnny always so. is full of two things that I love: one, insights; two, raw charisma and personality. Hash. And then three. Three is hash. But yeah, those other two are like. Ah, it's not the about the hash. Like. One thing we talk about is uh, how cannabis unites all of us and uh, causes the rock. about it. You know, there's people I meet in life, and I was talking to a guy today when I was at work, and I said, I would never know you if it wasn't for this plant. And he's like, there's no fucking way I'd even talk to someone like you. But because <laughs> I of, would never but, even entertain yeah, the idea yeah, no, of No, but it's just, it's just, it's, it's just interesting cannabis. on how cannabis yeah. unites a lot of us and how it brings a different group of people when you look around, and no matter where you are, and when you, you see someone else puffing, you always give that nod, no matter who you are. It's like, yeah, you know, yeah. it's kind of it a looks peaceful... Like something is lost in the couch over there. What'd you guys lose? I just gave some Oh, a telephone. Uh oh. If anybody finds a telephone that doesn't. So belong this to is them, the last of the first bounce of the three uh, spiritual uh, <laughs> uplifting highs Just for the end of your spiritual show. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do me, do me, do me. So as always, finding our happy spot. No, this would actually be my phone. It's got a cracked screen. I have a party to go to. I just said on my phone something party. <coughs> oh, Lord have That's mercy. That's pretty cool. <coughs> so. Good grief, Charlie Brown. Why don't they do this? Yeah. Yeah, uh, did we find the phone? I didn't have any change on it for parking. Oh. How long does your show Oh, it's just about over. Um, it's going to be over soon. Like, I might have changed my pocket. There. Okay, no worries. I got a ticket there just for if waiting for a parking tries to spot. Steal it, we'll run out there. I got a ticket, and I want someone else to get a ticket for waiting for a parking spot because they're before the corner it says no stopping. Really? Yeah. That sounds like a tall tale. Huh? No, it wasn't. I got one. They sent it to me in the mail. That's what they all say out there on the parking. I got one. On the side of the road, and you'll say anything. Whatever. All right. Well, yeah, uh, it's Coach <laughs> Weed. Okay, we're going to go ahead and. Do what I was supposed to do before Hit I got some bubble to do now. what I was supposed to do. So, where is it here? If I can find it, I will bring it to y'alls out there. So, um, <laughs> that it? Now, this is called Cannabis History, mid-19th to mid-20th century with Michael Horowitz. And this video is put together by my good friend, Mr. Chris Bennett, who was on the show earlier today. You saw we were having a great enlightening conversation with. And uh, yeah, this video is available, as all our videos are, on the front page of pot.tv or in the, our large archive of videos that goes on for thousands and thousands and thousands of hours. Go and check that out at pot.tv after you watch this video. Love you guys. We'll see you guys soon. Um, we're in the transition phase here. We're trying to move from live stream to YouTube video or trying to do both at the same time. As cool. you can tell, we're still on live stream. Right. But uh, YouTube isn't really doing exactly what we wanted it to do yet, but we're trying to work that out. And uh, we may <coughs> eventually move all the way over to YouTube if it does do a quality live production. But so far, it hasn't been up to speed. It's not as quite as good as the live stream one. Live stream seems to be working today. It just uh, let us down for the Sensible BC conference and for um, you know a couple weeks there, it was having troubles, Vapor Central and... Uh, Pot TV both were having troubles. But that seems to be uh, a little on the fixed side. It hasn't been too choppy out there for you guys, I don't think. But, um, yeah, we'll see how it goes in the future. That could be a temporary fix because you know how live stream goes. It's never I perfect. Know. But that's why we're trying to move to something better. Anyways, now I'm high and rambling. Watch this cannabis video by Thanks, cannabis guys. historian Chris Bennett. And I want to make sure you actually have sound. There it is. An error occurred. Well, that's not going to work. <coughs> I'm trying to refresh. Are we still live? Or are they playing? Uh -oh. Well, you know, just for your enjoyment, if we are not live or not live. Uh -huh. Oh, no, we, I think we're live. I'm not sure. Well, on that note, we'll smoke some hash. Maybe we're not. <coughs> um, yeah, but... That is odd that... 
My, uh, my computer doesn't want to allow us to see the video anymore. But will something else? Maybe we're not live anymore. <laughs> no, I think no, we're not we are. Live anymore. No way we're live anymore. Are we live out there, chatters? I don't know why I can't play the damn Chris video for you, but I'm trying to bring it up. It just won't allow me to use that window anymore at all. It's all frozen. Oh, heavens. It looks like I might actually have to restart this damn thing in order to be able to do that for you guys. <laughs> yeah, it says we're live. We're live out there. But so we found like, Jason's phone. It was actually on the table that I pushed out you. of the way for the hash. What a bitch. Oh, there we go. So um, let oh, me... Uh, look what it is. It looks like Pot TV is down and Canada's yeah. Culture is down. Wow. Well, that's a shame. But, you know, th that means I can get it on YouTube. I'm going to see if we... You know how to get a hold of Jason with his own Pot phone? TV. Give huh? me a second here. Yeah. I think I can still do this. This is cool. So we're going to talk more about microdabbing and about this... Um, oh, yeah, you and your microdabbing. Well, no, when you're dealing with a disease or a condition, it's a good way of being able to help somebody able to get enough THC in their system daily without them actually uh, overdosing or taking too much cannabis, right? right. So uh, we're finding a lot of people who are fighting cancer and stuff like that, taking a gram a day is getting them sick, they're getting really nauseated, they're overdosing because they can't handle the amount. Yeah. And so they're having problems dosing. So we're talking about micro-dabbing, and this has been more into what we're talking about. And it's, it's just another way of being able to get the amount of THC into the system in order to fight a disease or a condition. So doing it every hour on low dosages over a period of 12 to 14 hours a day means that you're getting the enough THC in your system mm -hmm. to saturate and be able to combat that condition. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's just a good... It's, a, it's just a new way of, of being able to help people who are unable to take... Who, who don't like the, the psychoactive effects of THC, but need the cannabinoids in order to fight the conditions that they're dealing with. So I've diagnosed a problem here. None of it's going to work. <clears throat> That's, it's microdosing, yes, Mad Tom. Yes. It's microdosing. Microdabbing is how you would microdose. No, I, you can microdab, microdose, but this is just for people that um, don't really like getting high and stuff like that. So, right. I mean. You know... Um, well, and you can do that with it's, other it's, things. It's, I don't know if you mentioned this because I was trying to do stuff, but you yeah. can do that with other drugs besides cannabis. You can do that with DMT. You can do it with oh, well, psilocybin. You can I, do I, I, I a talk whole about host people of drugs have that have severe migraines to take some small dosages of magic mushrooms or mushrooms or certain uh, psychedelic mushrooms in order to help with it. I mean, there's all kinds of 420 milligram dosages. I love that. Yeah. I, do, I cook at 420. I think I'll do all my dosing at 420. Um, but I mean, 100 percent there's all the different ways of doing anything right so if it's small amounts it's food it's everything right it's just what seems to work yeah you know what's bizarre is um i can't i just honestly don't think this is going to be able to play it won't let me play it um so we got somebody some in the chat b just suggested put up a show for on demand and attach the video file you want to show that might be the only way to do it there you go um because it's just not but that's annoying though because you can't watch it right this very second but, I mean, I could stop the whole broadcast and restart the computer, but that seems annoying as hell. You know what? It's been very spiritual today. It has been a spiritual day. And Pot TV ears, I'm sorry, but yeah, if you want to watch this one right now without uh, watching it on this episode... Here, try a little micro-dose. Just a little oh, okay. dab underneath your little... tongue. Just try it. I'm sure, sure you won't mind. Just do a little, little taste that. Mm. Not tasty? What's it? Oh, it's just the alcohol? No, actually, it's, oh, it's, 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 well, it's, it's what we call the LHO. So it's, uh, it's the liamine dissolved with, 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 of course, THC mixed with myrrh and cinnamon. Myrrh. And then, yeah. All of oh. the transport. <laughs> huh? Of course, you. we're still smoking pot. Can I have a sip of that water? Oh, here. Let me give you some water. It I think maybe cool. I took too much. I don't really think that, I mean, I, li I appreciate it, but... God damn. You, you had to try it, so you know what? It's a Leamy base extract. Thank you very much. That's one motherfucking strong And thing. it's a great way of being able to take now it, it orally. Now it like a clove. Um, that way it's, um, uh, I mean, for not leaving RSOs or any kind of other extraction. It's just, it's a better way of taking it for oral preparation, and some people are able to like it better. High stoner advisory. We got all the hotties in the house. She's got Moving her, the bomb bag oh, out of the way oh, now. Oh, the tips now. Wait, did that just happen? I thought Moving I saw Moving the hash you. hits over. Oh, wow. I, I keep seeing her progressively. Do you want to show? I couldn't be 
Do you want to show them the tips? Mm. Sure. Yeah, we're doing hash hits. I'm super fucking high now. Here you go. Here. And I'm going to be higher with that, whatever you thing you gave me. Here we go. Yeah, there she is. Oh, the Here's the bong. P-U-G. Here you go. Notorious some hug. of that up. That's, that's, that's really that's cute. Something nice. I know. I just told Jeremiah he's got to grind up some. What a guy. Something. That's what he does. She, like, oh, she yeah. just hit some epic hash, and she used a lighter. I was going to light the bee line, but, you know. <laughs> that's the joys. Of, wow. What's that in there? Here. Spark that. Stoner I'm the guy that seems to be lighting the pipes. Good to see you, Megan. If you didn't know, that's her other name. <clears throat> John, was that Jamaican bone blue rip. skunk good or just okay? <clears throat> it was okay. It wasn't good? Only okay? Um, well, and high it was made C. with hash, right? So it was, it was, we found that in the fields says, they were using certain things. In. A Nightmare on Dab Street says high tripsy. But there and, was uh, some really, really good ganja that we found at in the yard um, once we were in Jamaica. It was really nice, and uh, that was through Jeff. It was killer. But um, really, the fields, was, uh, it was really... Awesome resin, but um, I mean, we didn't get a really chance to cure it and smoke it because we were only there for like a week. So there you go. I'm sorry, am I not? Should I put some That's hash good. in there for you? Put some hash. And I see vegetarian zombie in the chat is quoting Ice Cube lines from old Ice Cube albums. What album was that? That was Lethal Injection. We're um, micro dabbing. Um, but he changed the lyrics a bit. Always puff, puff, passing, guys. <laughs> puff, puff, pass. You have another lighter? Do you have another lighter? So this way bah. I can do. It. No. Meh. Bah. I got no lighter thing. and beeline. No Shall have the lighting. Always no butane. No. Well, you know this is about some. There you go. Spark it up. Jeremiah is gonna do the pull. I'm going to grab my bong. Nice work. Easy E was the man. You got your head? I agree with Doob in the chat. Easy E is awesome. Oh, yeah. You better do that. That's a good thing. Come down and smoke weed with Stoner Advisory here at 307 West Hastings in Vancouver. The show's live right now, so she's here right this very second. I will get you high. She'll Where's get that? you high. Where's that? She provide all the good munchies. Where's that? You provide good munchies? I want some munchies. Oh, yeah, upstairs. Do you have munchies to provide to me? Downstairs. Right here. I don't have any money. Right in the store? <laughs> I'm starving. I want to... Chipotle I think we should. Wrap. I think, I think we should those? have like uh, a 420 baking. Uh, that way, at least we can be able to eat. That would be good. Owen Smith yeah. was here, but he didn't bring any edibles. We should have had him bring some like. Wow. Well, you know what? He's croissants or something. Brought that, hash. That's what I'm really craving. Pretty good. Croissant. I promise that uh, Tripsy here another hash hit, and I'm just holding the beeline. line. <laughs> All right, we, we could probably wrap this show up at just about any time here since we said we were going to do it a long time ago. But I am uh, Jeremiah here at Pot TV, and we'll be back again next Friday with Cannabis Culture News Live. Thanks to Johnny B, Corey, Tripsy, <laughs> Michelle, Brian. All the other guests in the show today. All those people out there watching. All of you loungers, thanks all for the, watching, as you guys often do. Come on, through the cloud that we uh, chat. And, you know yeah, what? Love you, chatters. We'll see you guys soon. Peace. Peace.